元科技，深耕于四川西南，有着“绿海明珠”之称的洪崖县。洪崖境内竹林资源丰富，以中小竞竹品种雌竹为主，雌竹生长快。韧性好，碧翠薄，纤维含量达百分之七十以上。二零一一年，竹园科技因地制宜发展竹产业，依托中国林科院平台技术研发而成多竹种重组技术产品——竹纲，并将竹纲注册为商标。目前，竹园科技拥有五十二项专利技术，构建竹。竹产业高科技发展新格局，竹纲高强度竹基纤维复合材料，通过定向重组炼制，竹纲强度可与玻璃钢强度比肩，它耐候性强，阻燃性高，使用寿命长，环保可再生，也能完成锯切、拼接、沙爆、上色、着油漆等多种加工方式。在异形结构建筑应用上有着巨大优势。正在举行的世园会上，国际竹藤园首次亮相，并且首次使用了一种高性能复合材料竹纲。通过绿色生态加工工艺制成的竹纲，属于复碳产品，已取得森林认证证书，是助力双碳减排、促进绿色发展的高科技重组竹材料。竹纲。可塑性强，应用极为广泛，已被应用到建筑结构、景观、地板、门窗、家具、户内外装饰以及装配式建筑等领域。当前，我国要大力发展绿色低碳产业，积极稳妥推进碳达峰、碳中和。竹纲是建筑结构与装饰一体化材料，能为建筑赋予生态竹文化的低碳科技魅力。竹生长期短，容易再生，因此竹纲是以竹代木、以竹代塑新形式下不可或缺的绿色建材。竹园科技不断创造行业的中国标准。世界标准。通过技术创新，我们发明了先进的连续式维管束分离疏解机，建成用于热压生产磁竹板材的热压机。二零二一年，经权威机构鉴定，竹园科技竹纲和磨压重组竹地板均实现技术革新，产品达到国际领先水平。竹园科技坚持创新与变革。当前，公司正倾力打造包含八县一院一中心在内的竹纲国际生态产业园，其中竹纲板材生产线年产可达六千吨，竹纲户外磨压地板生产线年产可达三十万平方米。二零二二年，竹园科技还投产了竹纲深加工项目，装配式建筑加工也日趋完善。中国式现代化是人与自然和谐共生的现代化。竹园科技推动竹资源创新发展，帮助竹农增产增收。生动践行，绿水青山就是金山银山。前方无法跟从，只能引领。竹园科技致力于让竹纲走出中国，走向世界。开创新型主产业的新纪元。在这安吉县最具特色的竹建筑集群中，我感受到了归隐山林的静谧
，世外桃源的美景。竹林风声起，何处染喧嚣？三四月，采茶踏青，一壶茶酒，拂袖而走。时间纷扰，浸泡脑后。竹径一直致力于原竹建筑设计施工一体化服务，是原竹建筑行业引领者和领军企业。竹径通过策划和执行全国性大型竹建筑、竹文化活动，特别是原创和承建制活动。近五年来，完成了二百余个原竹建筑作品，原竹建筑案例和市场占有率遥遥领先。举办竹产业、竹建筑、竹文化绿色发展高峰论坛、全国高校竹建筑设计建造大赛、北林大国际花园建造节、竹建构的无限创造分享会等全国性竹文化、竹建筑活动。以设计加科技赋能传统原竹建筑行业，既传承了传统工匠技艺，又极大推动了原竹建筑行业现代设计和科技进步。风之亭，水之亭，花海竹廊，一山一水，一竹一线，都倾注了匠人的心血。竹径拥有强大的技术研发力量，通过自主研发和与科研院校紧密合作，原竹防腐防霉处理，大幅提升原竹使用寿命。艺术不是建筑在一个伟大的观念上，而是建筑在一个小而诚实的实践上。截至二零二二年七月。竹径共申请专利三十余项，已获得授权发明专利两项，授权实用新型专利十一项。竹径掌握原竹建筑连接、支撑、功能拓展等核心技术，赋予原竹建筑全新的造型和美感。在满足功能需求的同时，通过形体塑造，使其与周遭环境融为一体。竹径通过举办全国高校竹建筑设计建造大赛和自主设计，在浙江省安吉县设计和建造了三十余个竹建筑，组成了极具中国第一竹乡特色的竹建筑集群，成为泛设计圈追捧的竹建筑探寻之旅特色旅游线路。一枕竹林清风，直竿而渔，无鱼也乐。
。湖南桃花江竹材科技股份有限公司立足于当地丰富的竹子资源，二十多年专注于竹材研发、生产和应用推广。将过去用原生态的楠竹做低端的产品进行了革命性的创新，运用现代技术和机械设备进行大规模生产加工，改变了竹材的原始形态，让平常不起眼的竹子变成了可行销全球的新型高档环保新材料，颠覆了人们对竹材的传统认知。好。花江户外防腐竹材可广泛运用于高端园林景观建设，用作休闲栈道、栏杆、花架、建筑外墙装饰等，极具美观，使用性能远超防腐木和木塑复合材料，具有抗变形、不开裂和极具美观的显著特点，密度可达 1.2 防腐达一级，防火达 B 一级，并具有一定的抗白蚁功能。桃花江竹集成材广泛运用于地板、门窗、吊顶、背景墙、各种室内装饰、家具制造、体育用品、竹工艺品、日用品制造等各类生活用品制造，材质可与世界名贵木材相媲美。桃花江竹结构材是公司最新研制的装配式建筑新型环保材料。用作可持续发展的新型竹木建筑新领域。通过实验结果发现，建筑结构材采用集成材最为合适。经过专利技术与现代机械加工后，拥有最佳的极限承载力和弯曲母量，依旧保持着竹材优秀的物理性能，还具有吸水膨胀系数小、不易开裂和不易变形的显著优点。采用公司专利接上设备生产的竖拼竹集成材，可以一次成型十米长、一点二米宽、二十毫米厚的大幅面板，支持任意裁切复合，胶合强度高，防腐、防霉、防火、防虫，可用于户外。公司产品已应用于全国很多世界级形象工程项目，如北京冬奥会、鸟巢、行政副中心。雄安新区市民服务中心、天津滨海新区文化中心、深圳张贝郊野公园、福建海峡文化中心、西安奥体中央公园、湖南湘江新区规划展示馆。公司计划未来每年以百分之三十以上速度增长，快速实现上市，为竹材行业发展做出贡献。
Hello, everyone. Hey, morning, David. Morning, Kevin. How are you? Um, Can you I, hear me well? I got favor. Okay. Qa? But Chris has not arrived yet. Okay. Yeah. I have had my own issues this morning. <laughs> But uh, I don't know if it's my internet or yours, Kiwe, which is slow. Kent, can you hear me? Is yours okay? Or is it mine that's slow? You, you sound okay to me. I think he's okay. Okay. So it seems to be it's Kiwe's. It's here in the screen. It says Kiwe's network bandwidth is low. Maybe my network is not good. Okay. Yeah, well, I've had a very uh, eventful morning, and I'm currently in a service okay. uh, in a Starbucks. Oh, oh no, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. That actually means you should have good internet, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I didn't see they had any Wi-Fi here. But so to, I'm through my phone. Oh, Maybe no. it's I'm a sorry. little bit noisy. I I actually I delivered one presentation um, in Starbucks one time before. It's too noisy. Yeah. So I'm not in the best location, but I'm here. But it's okay. It's okay. Good to see you. Yeah. So you said Chris is not going to be able to join. Yes, I remind him through WeChat, but there is no response. Uh, okay. I, 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 I think you can start on time. Okay. And uh, there are two guys we we cannot contact them. One is we we saw Lakshi from Mahindra University. And uh, okay. another guy is Suman Biswas from Korea. He told us he canceled the presentation. Uh, Maybe tonight we can complete the the session very a little bit early because uh, in the previous sessions we almost every every time we spent four hours. It's too long. No, no, I can't. Yeah. Yeah, we yeah. can't do that. Um, David, I'm wondering yeah. in settings, can you change your background the audio? No, your background audio, because we are okay. picking up am stuff I, from Am I picking up a lot of background? Yeah, okay. and, and so there's settings. like four settings, and I think if you set it to the higher one, it might work a bit better, especially since you are using a mic. Uh, so... Uh, so I've got automatically adjust noise suppression, low, faint background noises. How about that? I've now changed it. Is it picking up the background noises? Uh, yeah, that's actually worse. Yeah, yes. <laughs> uh, how about this? That's much better for me. Better. Okay. So I mean, I can hear the guy the pounding maker. on the on the counter there with the with the with the espresso thing a minute ago. <laughs> can you hear me now? Is it all fine? I, I can adjust the volume mic as well. Yeah, no, you're fine. That that cleared out the background pretty well. Excellent. I'm getting used Excellent. to this. Right across the street from my office is a uh, a pile driver right now. Uh, I'm not okay. in my office today, but for that reason but we have pile drivers so so noise suppression is important yeah well I'll, I'll, if you have a minute to understand my situation so i do go down go down to london uh and there's a train strike so i had to drive and it snowed yesterday so there was a crash on the road so i didn't make it to where i intended to be and uh, just stopped here on where I could. 
<laughs> and, and we're all going to laugh because we know that it was probably less than a centimeter of snow, right? The, the Canadians in the room will laugh. They will. But uh, I, I didn't see the accident. It was just the, the aftermath. Okay. So, Huey, are you still there? Huey? Yes, I mute myself. I think you okay, can start a uh, long time. Yeah. Uh, I was about to start. I just wanted a reminder who is not going to be delivering. So I'll just cross them out and I won't introduce them. I, uh, do I will join us later, actually. Okay. I, I think you can just start, yeah. say something okay. to open the okay. session and introduce Ken Harris. Yep. Okay. Just one second. I have everything in screen. Uh, okay, so second. Martin is also here. Okay, I'm ready to start. Uh, okay. Good morning, good afternoon to everyone. Welcome to the eighth session of the International Conference Bamboo, a very sustainable construction material, and the Third World Symposium of Sustainable Biocomposite Materials and Structures. Today's session is Round Pole Bamboo Structures, Research and Innovations. I am your chair for today, uh, moderator, and I'm David Trujillo. And our first speaker, who is already online, is uh, Professor Ken Harris of the University of Pittsburgh, who will be delivering a talk on bamboo joint capacity determined by ISO 22156 complete joint testing provisions. So over to you, Kent. And uh, yep, thank you very much. All right, thank you. I'm going to share. Like every good Zoom call, I will tell you what I'm doing. I'm gonna share my screen. And then I will do the mandatory, can you see my slides? Oops, that's actually wrong, hang on. Yes, I can see them. Let's start at the beginning rather than the end. All right, so we're in slide mode. So there's my mandatory question. Close up that little box and we'll get started. Okay, we're going to get started um, today and be talking about bamboo joint capacity um, by complete joint testing the pro uh, provisions of 22156. And so we're going to jump right into um, the new or the new ish um, design standards and, and, and talk about some of the implications of these and really show a process rather than, than the data. The data that I'm going to show is not that important, it's really demonstrative. Um, what we want to show is how we go about this, this process. Um, so I think at this point, hopefully most of the people online are, are comfortable and, and recognize that there are a suite of bamboo standards um, permitting the structural design of round comb um, structures. And of course, they, they start off with 19624, um, the grading standard, a method of, uh, or a, 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 again, a procedure for, for grading bamboo and, and, and David um, has been doing a lot of excellent work in really demonstrating how this can 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 be put um, uh, can be implemented. We of course have the 22157 document, which talks about physical and mechanical properties, and these two will will go together um, uh, in using grade determining properties and what have you. And then we're going to put both of these together and use them. Um, to design our structures under 22156. And 22156 is really what I'm gonna be talking about today. Um, just to bring everybody up to speed, 22156 is, is a relatively um, limited document. It's limited to one and two story 
light frame type construction, so residential, small commercial, and so forth, um, a roof limit of seven meters, which is, which is relatively typical, and, and so, uh, and, and who's, where the primary load bearing structure is actually made of round bamboo. And so this is the standard that we're going to be talking about. Let's zoom into that standard a little bit, and we find chapter 10 addresses joints and splices. And it does so in a little bit of a, a, a different manner than we sometimes see in other types of engineering structures. We look at the nature of the force transfer between bamboo elements. And so we have a joint that may be actually made up, of, or that is made up, excuse me, of multiple connections. And each of those connections may have combinations of force transfer associated with them. Um, in addition, section 10 um, addresses issues of stiffness, ductility, and, and the resistance to splitting. And so this is what I want to get to um, today in a very simple fashion, is talk a little bit about these joints um, and how we may be able to design them. So if we look a little bit deeper into section 10 of 22156, we find that there are some prescriptive guidelines for some relatively well understood joint types. And these would be then based on material properties or potentially um, grading. And so just as an example here, and we talk about dowel bearing capacity. To, to pass the guide to oh, hello? simultaneous. Hello, someone seems to have their microphone off. Yeah, can we? Thank you. Okay, sorry about that. Well, I'm not sorry, it wasn't me. Um, you guys can hear me again, right? Very well. Okay. Um, and, and, and so as an example of dowel bearing capacity, we do have prescriptive guidance. And if you actually apply these, as, as, as a few people have pointed out, these are end up with very conservative results. But of course, at this point, this is sort of a, this is a version one code. There are certain things that um, uh, that we need to be a little bit conservative on until we really have a little bit more of an established code. Chapter 10 goes on, or so, there we go, um, and references um, sort of a useful appendix, an informational appendix that looks at a number of rather conventional and, and in some cases a little bit non-conventional um, types of connections for bamboo. This is not really to say how you do go about doing things. The, it is a, a bit of a roadmap. So if you're using um, a particular type of connection, here are the clauses, here are the parts of the code document that you, you really should be looking at. And so it's informational in that sense. And so these are useful, but what one finds when one's, one's designing connections, as we know, bamboo connections are, are, are bamboo, the, the, the science behind bamboo connection design is quite nascent we find that very often either we end up with very conservative designs that are, 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 are very difficult to implement, or we just simply don't have a, a prescriptive means of, of design. And so we need another tool. And that should be, uh, and of course we need that because the, the, the potential number of different connections, is, 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 types of connections are almost infinite. We can have some very simple connections that might be appropriate in a vernacular sense. And of course, we've probably all seen some very complex connections, um, machined connections and, and even 3D printed connections and what have you. And, and so we need also a tool that can address all of these types of, of, of challenges that we have for connecting round members to round members, um, which is not exactly the easiest thing to do. So, my slides are not moving forward. There we go. I think my keyboard died. What we have in the document then is a means of prescribing connection capacities, design capacities that we essentially call design by testing or complete joint testing. And so we can determine design properties based on full scale complete joint assemblages these would have to have essentially the same geometry, fastener elements, details, and so forth of the connection that we're planning on using in the field. The tests, then we give the guidance on how to do this. The tests are carried out essentially in accordance with uh, ISO 16670. Um, the properties are then determined in accordance with the technical report uh, 21141. 
And then finally, we can determine characteristic values in an appropriate manner, and, and, and we cite um, 12.122 in this, in this context. And this is then design properties by complete joint testing. You're not going to take this approach if you're building a single structure. It's not going to be a rational approach, as we see. This is really, as we're going to see in a second, this is really aimed at these situations where we are building a large number of structures where we're going to have, let's say, a roof truss system that we're going to duplicate thousands of times or a wall frame system that we're going to duplicate and erect thousands of times. This is a way of determining the capacity of these particular elements um, uh, rather than actually having to uh, uh, look at uh, internal stresses in every case. And so there's a process. There we go. And I just need to get this out of my way. Sorry, I can't see what I'm doing. And, and we have a process that I'm going to take you through in this presentation. And so the purpose of this presentation is not to talk about the connection that I'm about to talk about, but to demonstrate this process. So the very first step up here on the top is we, we ask, can the joint be designed by prescriptive guidance? And if it can, we can certainly use the prescriptive guidance in 22156. What I want to talk about now is when we we can't, or we don't want to use the prescriptive guidance because we feel it's overly conservative. And so we come into this next layer where we're going to use complete joint testing. And now we want to talk about what that complete joint testing is going to look like. So the first steps is we absolutely, we need to define the geometry and the material properties that we're using. The material properties may be through 22157 testing or potentially through grading, um, uh, uh, 19624 compliant grading. So we can go either way there, I think. And then we actually conduct the testing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through a very, very simple example. And, and it was intentionally a very simple connection. And it was also selected because it was a connection that we knew would not perform well in what we were asking it to do because we wanted to make a couple of other points. So let's take a look at this um, process um, by example. And so we took a very straightforward example, a bolted fish mouth connection, where we have a fish mouth that has an internal draw bar. This, this draw bar is on the inside um, and bolted to the back of what we'll call the column element and the beam element is horizontal. These are then clamped into a test frame, the column horizontally. And the beam is cycled vertically up and down by use of an actuator in this case. And so we have a, a, um, a loading as we show down here in the bottom of this particular image. This type of fish mouth is really not expected to perform well in terms of its moment capacity, but it will have a moment capacity because of the presence of the drawbar. So it might be something that in a, in a very simple structure that we do want to understand what marginal moment capacity can we get out of this um, particular joint. And so we're going to go through this. And so this is the design of the test that we, we, we used. We have um, a couple details here that I think are really just interesting. Um, uh, and again, provided because this is the type of information that we would need if we were going through this process. And so we do document how the, 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 um, the fish mouth and the, and the connection was made. In our case, we used a, a large uh, core barrel, uh, really actually a nice tool for this. We document the dimensions of both the beam and the column elements. And so we have our, our diameter and our wall thicknesses and um, the numbers in brackets are coefficient of variation. So a percentage or a ratio of the mean. We can see the connection being put together. We used some um, fender washers on the back so as not to crush the, uh, uh, the column, um, column wall um, when we tightened up this connection and because it was tightened to a fairly large um, degree. And then we go ahead and test it. We have material properties, typical material properties for, for um, this particular material. It is, a, it is guadua, it's a relatively uh, uh, moderate diameter guadua. Um, moisture content density, all of those nice things. 
that we would we would want to report. And the one I'm just going to draw your attention to because I'm going to come back to it is compression strength of about 43 MPa. And these are average values now. And the coefficient of variation, relatively typical, um, relatively high as well. And so now we go into the testing. And again, this is what we're demonstrating. So if we look at 16670, it's a process. We have a, uh, uh, excuse me, a, a displacement load step relationship, which we need to follow that's prescribed. From that, we develop a backbone or a hysteresis relationship for the connection. And from that hysteresis, we draw the backbone, that red dotted line then becomes our monotonic curve. And so if we take a look at the data from our particular test, uh, we have applied force vertically, displacement horizontally. We're, again, we're testing in reverse cyclic um, behavior. So as the actuator pulls up, we're on the positive side up here in the upper right quadrant. And as the actuator pushes down on the negative side, and for those of you familiar with this kind of testing, um, we have a really nice pinched hysteresis behavior, um, three cycles at each displacement with the cycles decaying a little bit. And so we have these plots. And in this particular case, we tested 20 um, uh, assemblies, and this just happens to be one representative one. The envelope curves are then plotted. And just for convenience, I plotted the, the positive envelope in red and the negative envelope in blue. And what I'm going to do for all the rest of the plots, I'm going to flip everything up to the upper right-hand quadrant. The, the positive and negative aspect isn't particularly important. So we're going to move everything up into the upper right-hand quadrant, the red end. So we've done the testing. Now what we need to do is determine the properties of these envelopes. What are, what, what are the properties of my connection? And so here we look to, to the, the technical report uh, 21141, and we have various means of calculating based on this backbone curve, the joint stiffness. And so if we have uh, an essentially linear uh, portion, we have a joint stiffness. If there's an initial slip, we, we, we account for that. If there's initial friction in the joints, so different joints will behave a little bit differently. And um, similarly, a bilinear behavior. And in general, what we're going to do is we're going to find that stiffness as the secant stiffness now between, and rule of thumb is 40% of the maximum and 10% of the maximum. It doesn't have to be that, but that's the guidance. In addition, then, so we find the initial stiffness, excuse me, um, in this manner. We then find the post-peak stiffness or the, 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 the um, uh, based again on the nature of the curve that we see. So is it a bilinear curve? In which case we just draw a secant um, having a stiffness of K sub P. If it's a degrading curve, we use the elastic, one sixth of the elastic stiffness. We can use um, uh, secants and offsets down here uh, with degrading curves as well or uh, more of a typical offset method if we're looking at, at, at Dahl behavior. In the case of this particular study, um, we use the bilinear approach. Most of the data was, was uh, fit the bilinear very well, in which case we have our rules for finding our yield point. We have our initial stiffness K sub E. We extend our uh, post-peak stiffness backward until it intersects with K sub E, and we define the yield at that location. All of this is, is part of 21140. And so just an example, so I showed the blue backbone curve uh, previously. I'm plotting it in, the, in the, the positive quadrant here, but we have then all of the values that we need. We have the 40% of the maximum force, 10% in order to find K sub E, this red dotted line. We fit K sub P on, fits very nicely, nice bilinear behavior extend that back to find our yield point, and we have all of the data that we now need to move forward with. And so again, doing this to show the process, there is a data reduction process that has to be documented when we're doing this complete joint testing, and this is just simply one example. Now keep in mind, I've got 20 tests. I've got 40 backbone curves, 20 positive, 20 negative. And that brings up the next question. I need to look at my data and determine 
does it, first of all, does it make sense? But secondly, um, in my particular case, this particular joint would be expected to behave symmetrically, where positive and negative behavior would be the same. If that's the case, we actually have 40 backbone curves. You could also imagine a joint um, geometry which is non-symmetric, where it's going to have a very different positive and negative capacity. That being the case, we're going to have 20 positive, 20 negative. And so we want to test this hypothesis. In our case, particularly, um, we want to see that if we can, we can treat both positive and negative together. And so we do very simple statistics, an unpaired t-test to compare the positive and negative cycles, the 20 positive, the 20 negative. And sure enough, in terms of all of the, the capacities that we're looking at, the positive and negative cycles are statistically the same. And so we do have 40 data points. So that, that actually is kind of nice and helps us out a little bit. It also confirms our hypothesis that of course this connection should be symmetric and it is. If it weren't symmetric, we might want to look at a systemic error creeping in and, and look at our test setup. So now we've got to normalize our parameters. It is not appropriate, typically when we're looking at bamboo, unless we have very, 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 very tight control to simply look at force and displacement. We want to look at moment, rotational stiffness and stress, because of course these are affected by the dimensions, both of the test setup, the length of the beam and the dimensions of each of the elements. And these vary, it's bamboo. So we're going to normalize our data in terms of moment, um, rotational stiffness, and, and then ultimately um, extreme fiber stress. And with that data now, we want to look and determine what is the statistical um, or, or do, excuse me, does this data fit a normal or a log normal distribution? This is an important step and I've seen it left out in some, in, in some types of studies. When we go to determine characteristic values using conventional means, ISO 12122 or ASTM methods or what have you, there is a presupposition that we have a normal or a log normal distribution. And if we don't, the calculations of characteristic values using these tabulated values or very simple equations is, is, is incorrect. And so in this particular case, I'm just showing the, the, the distribution, um, the statistical z-score versus the two moments, the, the, the yield and the maximum. And we see a very nice normal distribution. Uh, and we actually do see one outlier data down here at the bottom. Um, so we had 40 data points. And so our final, um, uh, data will be actually work with 39. We do have a statistical outlier, which wouldn't be surprising uh, in a bamboo test. And so now we can put all of this together. We look at both our applied forces and moments, so F max and M max, yield, Fy and MY, stiffness, so Ke is the, the observed stiffness, the load versus displacement, K theta, um, the rotational stiffness. And then finally, the extreme fiber stress, which I'll come to in a second. We can look at their averages. We can look at their coefficients of variation. And we notice as we normalize the data, we get a small improvement in each case, as we'd expect, because we're normalizing out the effect of comb diameter and wall thickness. And then we determine our characteristic value. Now, this data, as we show here, here's all 40 curves, huge scatter as we might expect from this type of connection. It's really not a moment connection. The red line is a, is a best fit through all of the envelopes, so an average curve, if you wish. The blue line in this case would be our characteristic value, assuming that we're using our 5% our at 75% confidence. And so a very, very low bound, very, very poor moment capacity for this connection, which is probably what we would expect. Um, and so that's the methodology that we would do for complete joint testing. Just then, sort of as some observations, I, I wanted to, to, to look at this particular test and, and the, the, the complete, the, the bolted fish mouth that we did test. Um, after all, we have 40 data points and, and we may as well look at them. Um, so our test setup, we actually pre-compressed or, or, or used the, the eye bolt to, to draw a fairly large force, 8,500 uh, newtons. Um, this was determined using a torque wrench. 
And so if I look at the, the compression force in the beam element, that's about 5.5 MPa if we take our average values. As we start moving this back and forth, um, we have different types of behavior. We have dowel bearing type behavior, particularly um, at this location. And it's interesting because if we look at our final, our ultimate stress um, condition, we would have tension in the eye bolt, compression at the top or bottom fiber of the, of the uh, joint and opening at the opposite side. And when we calculate the extreme fiber stress, in this particular case, we had about 36 MPa. And that's where I want to bring you back. The average capacity of this particular bamboo was about 43 MPa. So we're right in that ballpark. We are really, we actually designed a, a relatively efficient joint for what that bamboo can carry. Now, this is not an efficient means of resisting moment, largely because we have such a small lever arm that, that we can't get much uh, uh, the force out of this, even with a relatively large stress. So we can learn a little bit about our, our joints as well. This issue is really an aside um, for this data. So in conclusion, hopefully I'm on time here, um, demonstrating a complete joint testing program and all of the steps involved. And so designing the test to, to uh, mimic appropriate um, um, use, looking at the statistics of those tests, both checking our hypothesis, is it, is it symmetric? Do we have systemic errors? Normalizing for geometry, determining whether we have normal or log normal distribution in order to calculate characteristic values. Of course, if we have different distributions, we can calculate those characteristic values. We just have to do it a little bit different manner. Um, and so again, this particular presentation, the, the bolted fish mouth joint is not important. The intent was, to demonstrate the complete joint testing process of clause 10.2 of ISO 22156 from start to finish with this nice little, little flow chart. And what I would do, I would direct those of you who, who need to look a little bit deeper at this. Um, this was published recently in the brand new Elsevier journal, Advances in Bamboo Science. I would encourage my colleagues to support this journal because I will tell you that if we don't get a lot of good quality papers in this journal, Elsevier will pull the plug um, after a couple of years. So um, consider sending your, your data to this journal. And with that, I think I'm on time. You are, Kent. Thank you very much. Look that was that. a brilliant presentation. I enjoyed it very much. I have lots of questions, but I see that the Q&A session is at the end. Um, so I, I suppose we'll have to just park from there. Though we do have a cancellation, so maybe we could do an interim Q&A session before that. Firstly, I want to apologize to you, Kent, for not introducing you properly. So uh, Everybody knows you me. Properly, I, I, I'll introduce you properly all the same. So Kent Harris is a Professor of Structural Engineering and Mechanics at the University of Pittsburgh. He received his doctorate from McGill University in 1995. Harry's researching interests include the use of non-conventional materials in civil infrastructure, ranging from FRP to bamboo. Harry's is a co-author of over 320 peer-reviewed articles and three books. He is senior editor of the Journal of Construction and Building Materials and is co-editor of the book Non-Conventional Vernacular Construction Materials. Harry's led the effort to revise ISO 22156 bamboo structural design. Harry's is a fellow of the ASC, ACI, IIFC, and is a professional engineer in Ontario, Canada. I also uh, need to introduce someone who is joining us today, who is Mr. Durai Jayaraman, the Global Program Director of INBAR, who is in today's session and will be talking to us all at the end of today's session. Finally, I will introduce my uh, co-chair, or co-presenter, um, who is Cristoforo De Martino, who will be now introducing our next speaker. Thank you very much, Kent. Christopher, Thank you, over to you. Thank you very much, Kent, and uh, sorry for our late uh, chairing. Uh, we will try our best to stitch on the program. 
Um, so the next speaker is uh, Dr. Xin Zhuo from uh, Zhejiang University. He is my colleague. He's an associate professor and is the director of the Construction Technology Research Laboratory in the College of Civil Engineering and Architecture. And he has spent more than two decades on uh, researching the construction technology of complex shape, uh, uh, structure, and uh, pre-stress special steel structures. Um, the title of this presentation will be the novel low-rise bamboo column structure building system composed of prefabricated frame units. Um, the, the stage is yours. Can you please share your screen so we can check if we can see your screen? Okay. And please. Thanks, moderator. Uh, that we have 20 minutes, so let's try to respect this time. Thanks. Thank you very much. <clears throat> good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. We, Joe, we cannot see your screen. Can you please share you your can, screen? Oh, oh, oh yeah, wait yeah. a moment. I will share my screen to you. Share my screen. Can you see my screen? Yeah, please go ahead. Okay. Oh, uh, hello, everybody. I uh, today I want to deliver my presentation in Chinese to more fluently and accurately introduce our innovative research works and my perspectives on the development of the bamboo building industry. My speech in English has been set to the organizing committee. The expert is invited to participate in simultaneous interpretation. In order to be more smooth and accurate to introduce uh, my viewpoints, I will do this presentation in Chinese. Uh, we have simultaneous interpreters uh, to help with the interpretation. This is uh, the background of my research. Bamboo palm is a type of uh, perennial plant and uh, also grow very rapidly. Traditionally, uh, we had already bamboo construction uh, but uh, due to this uh, poor structure, um, people say uh, bamboo uh, construction are for the poor people uh, due to the instability. So without any uh, technological modernization, we can not make a bamboo resources a market resource. We have a bamboo scrimber and uh, also other types of uh, uh, bamboo palms. Uh, bamboo is uh, very environmental friendly without using chemical adhesives. And for the market, uh, it's very cost effective. Uh, most people tend to purchase uh, the most cost uh, efficient products instead of those products with the best performance. So when we develop a bamboo comb structures, we should focus on reduced cost, uh, better texture, and uh, um, which can meet consumer demand. We believe uh, bamboo palms are more suitable for one to two story low rises buildings. Let me briefly review on the contemporary bamboo comb structures system. At the Expo 2010 in Shanghai, there were two outstanding bamboo structures. One is a Vietnam pavilion built by Mr. Wo Chung Neha and the German Chinese home designed by Marcos. These two buildings, which are designed very differently, displayed two structural systems of current original bamboo structures. There are many vari varieties of bamboo comb arch structure system, including planar bundle comb arch structures, cross comb arch gel structures, 
across um, bundle column arch structures, the construction of contemporary bamboo structure has been greatly aided by these remarkable structures. A large number of emerging bamboo com grade joints have been developed in recent years. Back to China, in recent years, there have been many bamboo com structure buildings developed in China. However, we noticed that while there were numerous bamboo com arch structures, there were very few bamboo com grade structures. We believe the major cause is that Fabricating multi-directional joints is too challenging. It's difficult for the business to manufacture it. But if they try to purchase it from the market, it's very expensive. Bamboo industry specializes in creating bamboo arches. So if they can produce bamboo arches themselves, uh, they can generate higher revenues. Having said that, the bamboo calm arch structure system still has a cost issue because uh, currently we are mainly depending on the artisans manually to baking these curves by fire. It's low productivity, higher labor cost. As a final result, bamboo calm arch structure having no cost competitiveness over timber structure, which is very unfavorable for the development of bamboo buildings. We know that bamboo and uh, timber are both um, bio-based uh, materials. So if uh, bamboo does not have the cost advantage, why should uh, customers uh, select these uh, bamboo because there's a uh, lack of mechanical qualities comparing to timbers. So we need to maintain the cost. There are two types of uh, bamboo calm structure systems. High expenses are mostly a result of hand bent bamboo tubes and customized uh, multi-directional joints. It depends very much on the labor and also the skillfulness of the labor. So we cannot standardize the construction results. On the contrary, uh, the bamboo comb grid structure is uh, uh, having the strict comb and the low cost. But the uh, disadvantage is to make multi-directional joints is, uh, lack of uh, universality. So what uh, our Zhejiang University is trying to combine the advantages of these uh, two types. We use a straight rod plus bolt because a straight rod and bolt are both less is expensive but can we directly combine the two structures? It's impossible. So we have to come up with an alternative uh, solution. Next, I want to move to the innovative uh, frame unit and bootcom grade structure system. In 2017, I follow my PhD supervisor, Professor Dong Shilin. We jointly promote uh, the bamboo multi-com spatial grade structure system and got the patent. I give you a simple example. We all know that the grade structure at the very beginning, we would uh, uh, start with the access and the uh, uh, geometry uh, sizes. The key to the construction is the spatial layouts of the connections and joints. What we are doing here is uh, to make 
the initial complicated three-dimensional connection to a straightforward one-dimensional connection. So you can see this is a very simple structure. No matter how complicated the shape of the construction, we do not need a multiple dimensional connections. We uh, streamline the 3D connection issue into 1D connection. There are two step stages, uh, two step um, processes. The first is a fabricated component in the factory. Second is uh, on-site construction. For the on-site construction, first we drill the holes first, and then connecting triangular frame by bolt to form the whole structure. You can see this is a very easy to construct, very easy to learn. For the workers, if uh, we teach them to do one triangular structure, uh, they, they can repeat the whole process. For the whole construction team, if we can teach them the first project, then we can have hands-off attitude and uh, we just provide them the data and they would follow the exact steps as the first project. Very easy to learn. Since 2019, we have created structures in the hyperbolic uh, paraboloid. Uh, uh, on the left-hand side, you can see this uh, structure. I, I want to thank Inba for your support and trust. And after that project, we completed the, the uh, cylindrical and the spherical structures, uh, which shows that these uh, structures are quite uh, suitable for the traditional steel structure constructions. But I like to draw your attention on these uh, stress transition routes. You can see on the left hand side is a steel tube. On the right hand side is the bamboo comb. Uh, with the same wind load, the right bamboo comb structure deforms uh, differently than the left steel structure. Of course, we need a further study on the internal forces. Having said that, uh, we can still see the stability of the bamboo comb structure. Currently, we already completed from uh, zero to one. But how can we make uh, from one to 100? This is a remaining issue to make uh, these uh, bamboo structure more beautiful, cheaper, and environmentally friendly. We decided uh, to change uh, the combination method. For example, uh, some of these constructions, uh, they use uh, two goals, uh, some use uh, three, some use four. It depends very much on the inner forces. This is the, the first consideration. Second consideration, if there is any large span needed, this is uh, for the 2022 Hangzhou Asian Games, for the athletes and journalists reception center because this is a contemporary construction in order to save the cost and also to uh, promote environmental friendly concept, they decided to use bamboo. We have two alternatives provided. The second one is a spatial grid trust to increase the structural rigidness so we can have a larger span, but unfortunately, we know that due to the COVID, 
uh, this project uh, was delayed until next year. So we we'll hope that uh, in future, the uh, other countries or other cities, if we want to have a test of the structural design, we can test it in the field. Another thing is the dura durability issue. For a bamboo structure, I think the biggest question is Can you hear us? I think that we lost him. Still connected? Let's wait one minute if he can reconnect or we will move to the next speaker, David, what do you think? Uh, yeah, let's give them a couple of minutes and then uh, okay. we'll move to the next speaker. Yeah. We'll... Unfortunately, this yeah. is the problem of online meetings, right? Sometimes people are disappearing without any willing. Yeah. Well, um, our next speaker, uh, who I'll introduce while they reconnect, is uh, Vizalaxi Palakopul, a professor of Mahindra University. She will be presenting a development of high capacity fiber reinforced bamboo composite structural members. I don't have I a think formal that, introduction. Uh, David, that, uh, Shin reconnected. I don't know if we want to give him one, two minutes. To yeah, complete. yeah, absolutely. I was yeah. just uh, making sure yeah, there wasn't yeah, yeah. any dead time. Chuo, do you want to re to co complete very fast? Because uh, unfortunately, the time is almost finished for your presentation. Sorry, this means continue. <laughs> his, I've his seen you. Your... Is off. Yeah, you are muted. We cannot hear. Joel, you are muted, muted. You are still muted. Oh, you are muted. And uh, unfortunately, uh, the time is very limited. We have to move to the next speaker. Can you hear me? Okay, mode. Yeah, yeah. Please uh, complete your presentation is one, two minutes. I know the technical problem, but we have to respect the time, okay? Oh, uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Oh, okay. Uh, can, can you see my screen? Yeah, yeah. You can please in one, two minutes, okay? Because uh, unfortunately, oh, one, two minutes. Okay, okay. 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 Uh, okay. <clears throat> Next page. Uh, so, is that the so this is more complex structure. This is the bird's nest. Everyone knows this. And uh, this is a curvature design. But the issue is that in the structure, every component is bespoke. So the construction, the manufacturing processing are extremely challenging. If it's a timber and if we have a curvature, connection, then you will face a similar challenge. Every piece has to be bespoke. Uh, 
the 2019 Swatch uh, headquarters in Switzerland is using a similar design with timber. You have to very precise when you make such structure. Everyone wants to make a very beautiful, magnificent structure. Modern technology allows you to make such complex structure, but can anyone afford it is an issue. And uh, some university students, when they participate in the design context, they use all types of uh, free surface. Yes, geometry is no longer an issue with Rhino and other designing tools, but manufacturing and installation and construction are the issue. Here, I'm showing you a three-dimensional cam arch. This is a rendered version. It looks magnificent, but now you can see it doesn't really shine. It's not that the bamboo constructors don't have the handicraft. It is difficult to do it manually. And can we use, um, we can having a chain. We have two uh, models. If we have the comb, we can have a sloped. We also can have a free curvature surface. And we have the same number of triangles here, but one is too common. The other one is very eye-catching. And uh, so one is steel structure, one is timber structure, very beautiful. But the issue is that if you, well, the manufacturing, the components, installation and construction are extremely complex. If we use the triangular uh, bamboo structures, manufacturing is very simple, although the structural uh, design can be very challenging. So it, it can really reduce the overall construction cost. And the final one is quadrilateral frame unit for residential buildings. Even if we have a high rise, people still want to use wood or bamboo to have interior deco of the floor and the walls. In many countries, we have like a two story low rise buildings made of wood and structure and the interior deco are two in one. No need for secondary interior deco. And inside China, more people prefer to have a natural material for construction. But now every year, the timber, a lot of timber is relying on import. Bamboo is uh, in oversupply. So we can use bamboo to replace timber. You can really deal with the scarcity of uh, timber supply, but we just don't have a good way to do this. We're using quadrilateral frame unit as a structure unit. It is like modular, installable, in situ, and the connection method is uh, was explained before. And it is a quadrilateral frame. One is a triangle, of course, they have different uh, mechanical properties. We just want to offer a second choice for people. If you're really like timber or bamboo structure uh, for a construction project, you can have a good value for price, lower cost, uh, alternative choice. Our student, they also designed and built a one to 0 0.5 ratio miniature building, proving that uh, the structural and the constructional methods are fully actionable, workable. And depending on your uh, comfort uh, need, you can have an insulated layer in between the panels and the waterproof materials. And also we can work in the B and the B hostel, and we have some structural design to use some block-based smart calculation algorithm to have a fast programming and use uh, very, uh, figure out the spatial dimension layout of different building blocks to have a high efficiency design. Final conclusion. The engineering practice verified by the viability of the prefabricated frame-based low-rise bamboo comb structure building system. It is a low technology intensi intensity, simple to learn and spread. Second triangular frame unit bamboo comb grid structure is most 
cost effective for complex shape buildings. Low rise bamboo cam structure house has enormous market potential as long as the quality can meet expectations of modern people and the price is affordable. It has a huge market potential. And number four, replacing the decayed frame unit in situ is an effective way to prolong the service life of the bamboo structure. Okay, I finished. Thank you very much. Thank you for your presentation. As you know, we will move to the question and answer session at the end. David, please go ahead. I think you introduced the next speaker, but you can reintroduce uh, again. Yes, I will reintroduce it. So our next speaker is Professor Vizalaski from Talakapul, uh, who is a professor at Mahindra University. Unfortunately, I haven't been supplied with an introduction. Uh, is Vizalaski here in the call? Um, her presentation is Development of High Capacity Fiber Reinforced Bamboo Composite Structural Members. Uh, professor Talakakul, are you here? Hello? Okay. Hi, David. I, well, think, I think he is not here. I think she isn't either. No, that's fine. So I will go with my next speak, the next speaker, uh, who is Sin Miao Neng, who is a lecturer at Beijing Forest University, who has a presentation of ecologically self-anchored FRP bamboo composite anchor bolts, concepts and experiments. Uh, Dr. Meng graduated with bachelor's degree in civil engineering from Chongqing University and his PhD degree in civil engineering from Tsinghua University. He became a lecturer in Beijing Forestry University in 2017. His main research focuses on the mechanical behavior of FRP bamboo composite structures, steel timber composite structures, and wooden based sustainable construction materials. He has served as an editor of a national standards and two CECS specifications. He served as a junior editorial board member of the Journal of Sustainable Structures. Dr. Meng, please start. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Can you see my slide? I can. And just to remind us previously, let's try to stick to time. Thank you okay. very much. Okay, no problem. Okay. Thank you, Chairman. Dear thank everyone, you. I'm Jimmy Meng from Beijing Forestry University. It's my honor to present uh, my research work. The topic of my presentation is uh, ecologically self-anchored FRP bamboo composite anchor balls. It's con concepts and experiments. Okay, it contains four parts. First is background. Okay, in the last three decades, China has planted lots of trees to prevent soil erosion. Due to the robust plant root system, the shallow landslide can be restrained but when it comes to a heavy rain, the landslide will, will occur. So in this regard, we need anchor balls to protect the slope. In addition, the anchor balls could be used in lots of applications as shown in this figure. And uh, it has been proved that the anchor balls has been uh, is effective enough in ground anchorage application. And uh, generally, the anchorage board can be divided into three types, including mechanical, bonded, and uh, hybrid ones. And it mainly carried on tension, actual tension in soil slope. And uh, we usually used the steel bar and uh, some conventional materials to produce the anchor board, like steel, like wood, and uh, bamboo products. In addition, we some new materials has been explored in anchor uh, materials like the FRP, MPR, and uh, composite components. At present, oh, sorry, at present, okay, we want to use some uh, grain, ecological, and sustainable materials to reduce the carbon dioxide emission. And uh, we also need to increase the, the ductility in this regard. And we proposed uh, a new uh, composite anchor board. It's uh, composed of FRP and uh, fiber reinforced polymer and uh, cell and bamboo materials. 
It has a self anchor, U shaped uh, end, and uh, it also contains two kinds of grout materials. One is uh, ecological grout, uh, like the e ecological concrete, and another one is the high strength grout. And uh, using this anchor bolt, we can combine the plant root system and uh, uh, the anchor and the FRP anchor composite bamboo anchor both. And we want to the root can grow to the the anchor bolt, and and in this way, an integrated anchor slope protection slope can be developed once the root grow into the U shaped end. And we also, uh, in the, for this compos new composite anchor bolt, it is uh, from the CFRP. And the self anchored structures has been studied in FRP applications. It uh, could be, it could fully utilize the tensile strength of the materials. Uh, for CFRP, it has two, uh, two uh, laminate two structures like the non-laminated scraps and uh, laminated scraps. And uh, it has also been explored in the anchor board uh, in EPFL. Uh, Professor Keller has used the, the CFRP, the, the multi C, CFRP, multi stripe CFRP end in the ground anchor. So the, the self anchored use the, use the U shape and is also, is, is already being explored in FRP materials. And uh, another one is uh, that bamboo is an ecological construction of materials. It has very low energy consumptions. And also it has very short growth cycle, easy processing, and also uh, high strength and lightweight. And another one is that we calculated the carbon emission factor for round bamboo. It was found that the round bamboo, the emission factor is very low compo uh, compared to the conventional materials. And if we considered the carbon sequels traction, sequels traction, uh, sequels traction uh, and uh, it can be the negative carbon materials. And in the carbon emission factors, one most part for, for the carbon emission is that the thermal bending process, like uh, Professor Zhu mentioned. And if we reduce this, this liquid uh, natural gas, uh, if we remove it by, if we replace this LNG with uh, solar energy, we can reduce the carbon emission uh, factor. We can, we can reduce, we can uh, decrease this a lot. And so I, we, we think bamboo is an ecological building materials. And another thing is that China has abundant bamboo resources, which helps to reduce the cost of the bamboo structures. And uh, then we conduct a literature review of bamboo bowls. And we found that the bamboo bowls has been used since 1977, mainly in roadway support of coal mines and the earthen site protection. Different bamboo materials had been explored, including strips, Scrimper and uh, engineer bamboo, also bamboo camps. And uh, for the weighted structure, it is like the steel bolt uh, and uh, it is used on the ground side anchor height, including single, single wedge and uh, multi edge and multi wedged end. And another one is that if we want to increase the anchorage, we can use the expansion shell. Uh, in this place. And uh, another one is that uh, besides the which the ends, the bamboo balls can be designed as the serrated uh, segments. And uh, for the screen balls, it is very similar to the steel balls due to the reason is both the strength and the durability can be improved a lot. And uh, also for the round bamboo camps, they can be individually used and also can be combined with the steel rebar as shown in the figure. They, uh, they have been already applied in the earthen size. And uh, next, uh, I will introduce the safe anchored bamboo balls. The U-shaped uh, um, anchor balls uh, have, could be defined with the slope angle, the thickness, 
and the diameter. And uh, it can be achieved by two methods. One is the thermal forming and another one is winding. And uh, we, like, like Professor Zhuo mentioned that we can use the thermal forming to make the curved uh, bamboo, bamboo can, but the temperature is unknown and uh, actually the carbonization of the surface cannot be avoided. So we want to improve the thermal forming process and obtain the suitable temperature range. Uh, we studied different thickness of the bamboo strips and uh, applied different temperatures. And we also conducted uh, four point bending test. We found that the flexure modulus changed with the temperature, but uh, I think more microscopic research should be done to explain the relationship between the modulus and the temperature. We just find uh, is, is the, the trends, but we didn't find the role. Then we tried the, another way to make the U-shape, and uh, it is a winding method. We, uh, we, we use the bamboo strips and uh, use the winding and use the FRP and uh, to get the FRP bamboo composites. And uh, we developed a method based on image uh, recognizing, uh, recognition to get the, to design the mechanical properties of bamboo balls because different strips uh, the, 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 tens, the tensile strength of bamboo strips is related to the fiber of the bottle, the density of the bottle. And another one is that we conducted the tensile tester for the bamboo strips and obtained the, the, the tensile strength for the bamboo strips. And we also defined the methods to to how to say that to separate it, the bamboo strips into different groups to get to to design the bamboo balls based on the, the mechanical requirement. And uh, here's the relationship between the fiber volume fraction and uh, the tensile strength parallel to grain. And uh, then we conduct uh, the tensile test for the bamboo balls in this boat. The GFRP was used just uh, was just used as the coating, and uh, we found that most of the specimens built with a fiber rupture at the U shape end. And uh, another one is that we also designed pull after test. It is it was still under test due to the COVID nineteen, and uh, but the theoretical analysis has been done. We divided the self anchor composite boat into two parts. Well, for the linear part, we built a model to predict the, the shear stress and the interface at the interface and the tension force. And uh, we tried the two models. This model is based on the half space model and uh, it's based on the elasticity. And we can uh, conduct the parameter studies to find the relationship between the elastic modulus and the shear stress distributions. Another method is that the bond slip constitutive, constitutive model. We prefer among these models, we prefer the trilinear model to predict the, 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 bear, the, the bearing capacity. And uh, here is the, the, the Philly mode. We obtained the shear stress distribution at the interface through the whole loading process. And uh, then we studied the relationship between the loading, uh, the load carrying capacity and the bond strength. And uh, we found that we need to optimize the, the, the plastic uh, performance to improve the capacity. And uh, after the U-shaped anchor, uh, as for the U-shaped anchor, we combined the thin shell model and the thick shell model to get the, uh, the, the load distribution and the stress distribution across the section. But uh, we, we know that for the thin shell model, because it didn't consider the thickness, so uh, we, we don't know the, the stress distribution across the, the, the thickness, uh, across the cross section. And, but for the thick shell uh, model, we can 
obtain the stress distrib distribution across the cross section, but we cannot consider the friction at the interface. So here's the results. Uh, we can get the stress distribution uh, along the board and across the cross section. Then we combined these two methods together, and we found that uh, here's the theoretical results. This is the experimental results. We found uh, it, the results should large deviation. So we, we think we need lots of tests to evaluate the accuracy for these two models. And uh, we also conduct a finite, al uh, finite element analysis and uh, to verify the theoretical model. It uh, proved that the, effect, the, the, effective, the effectiveness of the sick shear model. And uh, here's some conclusion for the self anchor balls. First, we found that the, the temperature is related to the elastic modulus, and we found that we need to optimize the temperature for, for each sickness. And uh, you anchor, you shift anchor uh, could, uh, could improve the, the, the tensile, um, the, the loader carrying capacity for the anchor bolt. And uh, we also uh, studied the, the theoretical uh, analysis uh, based on the uh, elastic, elasticity and the thick model uh, or the thick shell model or thin shell model. And uh, we, we think that if we want to uh, fully developed the, the tensile strength of the FRP and bamboo materials. We need uh, design is slope angle, is thickness, also the diameter of the inner diameter of the boat. So finally, we in the end, we draw some two conclusions. Uh, the first one is that uh, we proposed the ecological self anchored FRP bamboo composite anchor, but we also need more need more tests to to verify our concepts and uh, we think it can provide uh, enough load carrying capacity and uh, durability because uh, we we want the frp to provide the durability and uh, if if the road growing uh, into the anchor boat and we think we can build an integrated slope protection system and uh, we conducted some theoretical uh, study and uh, uh, experimental test and, uh, and some finite element analysis. We found that the bearing capacity of U-ship uh, is considerable. And uh, that's all my reports. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was a very interesting presentation, Dr. Meng. Um, Thank you. Now, uh, I'll pass you over to my co-chair, uh, Christophero. Thanks, okay. So the next speaker is uh, Professor Luisa Molari. I think I've seen her, can you share the screen in the meanwhile when I'm introducing? Uh, I and Professor Luisa Molari is an associate professor of strength material at the Alma Mater Studiorum University of Bologna. She's a structural engineer with a PhD in structural mechanics, and she teaches uh, theory of structures at civil engineering and, archi and architecture students. And uh, the focus of her research is on natural materials for construction, in particular bamboo, straw, and reed, and for their use in a structural context. Um, the title of uh, her presentation uh, is uh, the effects of mechanical properties of bamboo treated with fire. You have uh, 20 minutes, Luisa. The recommendation is please try to respect the time. Thanks. And yes, that uh, would stage be... is yours. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Cristoforo. Thank you for, uh, for your uh, introduction. And uh, yeah, I'm going to talk to about the effect of uh, on mechanical performance of bamboo treated with fire. Okay. <laughs> so as we all know, bamboo has all the natural material is susceptible to, 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 to degradation. 
And uh, so we have to treat it. And uh, uh, among the non-chemical treatments, uh, the heat treatments uh, have attracted increasing attention. Um, the bamboo heat treatments consist of uh, subjecting bamboo to high temperature in, in specific time. And uh, the, the, medium, the medium for this is uh, can be several uh, factors like uh, steam, oil, higher, or uh, or fire. And uh, but generally, uh, the the treatments uh, improve uh, the dimensional stability and the durability. And this is why uh, they are done. But uh, uh, on the other hand, the increasing temperature could reduce the the mechanical properties. So. Uh, we have to, to look at it and to uh, show what happens uh, to the mechanical performance of the, of the culm. What uh, the Italian and, and uh, crafters and, uh, um, are, are usually uh, doing is to use this uh, Abura Nuki traditional treatment. This is uh, a Japanese uh, uh, treatment uh, and uh, it's made uh, with, a, with a torch that remains uh, at uh, 10 centimeters uh, with, with, uh, of distance with, with respect to the culm and the culm is constantly um, rotated and uh, it's constantly rotated, and uh, the, uh, the the torch is uh, uh, is uh, move is move the, the torch is uh, is moving when uh, the there is a change of, in color and uh, and there is a swelling of resin in the in the culm. Uh, and uh, after this treatment, usually the culms are dried for uh, for for fourteen days or for some days, uh, usually in the sun. And uh, so the the our question is, uh, what happens to bamboo mechanical performance when a culm is treated in this way? So to uh, to answer this question, uh, we. We we took a, a, a culm and uh, in the um, in this is part of uh, of uh, uh, the a study uh, of uh, uh, the mechanical characterization of Italian bamboo. So we took a uh, um, um, Italian uh, bamboo uh, of uh, Philostachis viridis species uh, from uh, a central part of Italy. Is from Macerata. Uh, and it was provided by Poliedra Association, that is a, an association that uh, are using bamboo in, uh, in, in the social context. context. And so we took uh, these uh, this culms and uh, uh, we, we took two parts of, uh, of the culm, uh, a bottom part from 0 0.5 to 1.5 meter and then a top part top uh, from uh, 2 uh, 2.5 meters to 3.5 meters and um, and we we, we perform some uh, some uh, uh, test on this two part of culm treated and untreated first of all we look at the at the density and uh, and 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 at the moisture content and what we see uh, what we saw is that uh, uh, the density is slightly higher in treated bamboo in respect to the to the untreated but not statistically significant higher uh, so we we pass from uh, uh, 680 uh, kilogram uh, over a cube meter uh, to 740 uh, kilogram uh, over a cube meter. Then we perform some mechanical tests to see how the, uh, the, the treatment was uh, uh, influencing the, uh, the, um, the, the mechanical performance. So we, we did uh, uh, 
compression test, tension test, and bending test. Uh, the tension test uh, and the and the, the tension test and the compression test uh, was uh, uh, we we follow the ISO two two one five seven. Even if in the tension test we do not put the uh, the tabs to increase in the the the, the cross section in the anchorage uh, position. And um, and the, for the, the bending test, we followed the new Italian standard that is the uh, UNI11842. Uh, and for the for the uh, the measure of the deformation, we put a string gauge uh, in two in two directions for the compression at the formometer in for the tension and uh, string gauge in the in the bottom part of the of the specimen for the for the bending test. Uh, the bending test, as I already said, uh, follows the the new Italian standard, and uh, uh, actually we we did only the the um, the the test on uh, the specimen with uh, the external part on the bottom of the of the of the specimen so because uh, uh, we wanted to test if the surface treatment was uh, uh, doing something or not so the results uh, for the compression test uh, what we what we saw is that for the comp for the compressive elastic modulus, uh, actually we do not see a lot of difference here. In uh, in green, uh, the untreated culm. In uh, uh, yellow, the treated ones. And uh, in light color, the part that are uh, from uh, the top of the so from uh, two. Uh, 0.5 meters to 3.5 meters, and uh, in uh, dark, in the darker color, the one that are on the bottom part of the culm. So what we can see is that uh, basically uh, there is no differences in the in the stiffness of the of the. There is a differences in the uh, in some differences in the average value, but not uh, statistically significant significant in uh, in the distribution and for the compressive uh, strength uh, we can see more or less the same things because uh, uh, if we if we compare the the, the darker uh, with the darker and uh, the 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 light color with the light color so the part that is from the bottom and the part uh, that is from the top uh, each other i mean one with this correspondent uh, uh, specimens uh, we do not see uh, much difference even in this case what we see that uh, that is uh, uh, quite different the only thing that is uh, quite different between treated and untreated the uh, samples is that uh, is the Poisson ratio, and uh, we we did uh, the Poisson ratio is uh, uh, the the ratio between uh, the 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 circumferential to the the longitudinal uh, deformation of the of the specimen, and what we see is that for the untreated we have uh, all the specimen that are in a much uh, closer range in respect to the uh, to the to the one uh, of the treated uh, samples and uh, this uh, could have an explanation i will uh, i will come back to this uh, in the in the following slides the result for the tension test again for the for the elastic uh, um, for the elastic modulus, also in tension, there is uh, not a lot of differences in the if we if we look at the distribution, we we really we do not have uh, uh, a significant difference. 
and uh, the same for the for the tensile strength. So here we can see uh, the slightly difference uh, uh, between uh, the as we as we know uh, as as it was expected from uh, the the bottom to the top. So uh, in the top uh, there is a, a average value that is higher than than on the bottom. But if we compare bottom with bottom and top with top, we do not have significant differences in the strand. We can, um, for, for the bending test, uh, we have only the bottom part because we, we did all, only uh, for, for this uh, part of the, of the column, the, um, the test. And uh, what we see is that uh, there is, uh, 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 again, uh, uh, more or less, uh, the same behavior in uh, uh, stiffness and in strength. Here, uh, we for for the for the specimen that uh, uh, we for for the specimen uh, af after sorry after the bending test uh, we we did a um, um, a mic um, a micro uh, micrographs uh, micro pictures with uh, the the ASM with the um, uh, the the microscopy and uh, we see that uh, the that for the treated samples, we had a, a sort of texture. Uh, there, there are some cracks uh, between the uh, the the island of the of the fibers and the parenchyma uh, cells, and uh, this is uh, quite. Uh, I, I, I hope that you can see, uh, but uh, there is uh, is evident the differences between the two. And this is uh, something that uh, uh, could explain also the differences in the in the Poisson ratio, because uh, we do not see uh, some damage in the uh, direction of the fibers, but we can see uh, a, a damage uh, in uh, between fibers and the parenchyma. So uh, this could, could bring to uh, more or less the same behavior in the direction of the fibers, but something different in the direction orthogonal to the fiber itself. After that, we, we, uh, we have thought, uh, but uh, with this, uh, this treatment, could uh, uh, bring uh, 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 ad advantages or could be a disadvantage for uh, the when when the cool is subjected to UV ray. And uh, to answer this question, uh, we um, we took uh, uh, some samples, uh, eleven identical samples. Uh, Identical in the sense that we we took from uh, the same portion of columns, of column. Uh, we took this uh, this uh, these samples, and uh, uh, from treated and untreated columns, uh, and we we posed this uh, uh, this this. Uh, stick of column like this uh, under the, the radiation of uh, uh, UV ray. And uh, we, we and then we uh, tested these uh, aged uh, samples, treated and untreated, uh, with a, a bending test, a four-point bending test, as we saw previously. And uh, we uh, we radiated the the samples for uh, different uh, uh, duration from zero uh, to uh, three hundred and sixty hours, and uh, we we. Uh, but we, we we tested uh, at bending uh, to see if the the, the mechanical characteristics uh, were influenced by uh, the by the UV ray, but also by the treatment, the previous treatment before the UV ray, the UV ray irradiation. 
what we did is also because uh, the uh, when uh, uh, the samples uh, were uh, under the UV ray irradiation, there was a temperature that was around 40, 40 degree. Uh, we uh, we uh, we put uh, uh, the some samples of the same uh, portion of the culm, so more or less identical uh, in the. Uh, in in a oven uh, with uh, 40 degrees of uh, of temperature uh, constant uh, for the same duration of the radiation to see uh, if uh, uh, something changes so to in some sense separate the two the two effects the effect of the temperature and the effect of the UV radiation and what we we saw is this these are the bending strands and uh, what we saw is for is that, that the the treated the treated uh, sample uh, the, the okay the untreated sample the natural one uh, basically has had a slightly increasing of the strength and thus and then a decreasing on the strength but after uh, 360 hours we do not see much differences in the in the in the strength in the bending strength again this is something that is a uh, um, is something that is related to the to the properties in the longitudinal direction of course uh, what we see for the treated one is that uh, we have uh, this increasing uh, uh, strength uh, that is shifted uh, in respect to the to the treated one, and uh, and we have uh, then we have this uh, this degradation, but uh, is uh, slightly um, shifted uh, in respect to the to the uh, to to the untreated one and uh, uh sorry and uh, uh what we see for the for the specimen that are only uh that remain only in owen uh, at 40 degree of temperature basically uh, nothing happened to them uh, so the the uh, the strength is uh, uh, more or less on the same on the same uh, on the same values. So, in conclusion, uh, we can. Uh, this is a uh, a study for a specific treatment that uh, is uh, usually performed uh, in uh, in bamboo columns, and uh, what we can. Uh, what we can uh, see is that uh, the mechanical performance uh, along the direction of the fibers are not influenced. And um, from the, micro the microscopical pictures, uh, seems that uh, the performance on the orthogonal uh, direction uh, could, uh, could, uh, um, could uh, be influenced and, uh, and the, we should investigate this uh, because um, this is something that uh, can be added to this uh, to this knowledge. Uh, we we can also say that the UV radiation till uh, three hundred and sixty hours do not influence the mechanical performance uh, in uh, treated and also in the untreated, but also in the treated ones. So uh, the 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 treatment. Make makes no disadvantage and uh, on this and uh, again um, the 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 uh, the mechanical performance on the uh, on the circumferential on the on the direction or to go to the fiber should be investigated uh, more. Okay, I'm finished. And also, okay, just just last thing. Also, uh, we need to to go further for the for the for the irradiation for the duration of the irradiation because we started to see a uh, uh, a slightly uh, damage on the on the mechanical performance. Thanks for your presentation, Luisa. 
Um, uh, we can move to the next speaker. Uh, please, David, go ahead and uh, introduce the next speaker. The next presentation will be 10 minutes. Thank you, Christopher. Time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that, that's correct. The next presentation is 10 minutes, and it is from uh, Miretu Tadesi from Bahir Dar University. Uh, Miretu's presentation is called Bending Stress Prediction of Oxytenathera abyssinica, bamboo based on geometric section. Over to you, Miretu. All right, sir. I'll start. Okay. Is that audible? Shall I start? Shall I start, sir? Yes, yes, you can start, please. I can see your presentation. Right. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, I'll start my presentation, uh, Bending Stress Prediction of uh, Oxytenatera Abyssinica Bamboo, uh, based on uh, geometric section. I'm from Ethiopia. Uh, so let me introduce the chapter. Uh, as we all know, there are uh, various uh, species of bamboo. So among these- Sorry uh, are... to interrupt you, sorry, sorry. Uh... I think your presentation would look better if you click on the presentation button. All right, all right. This one, because- Yeah, ah, that's okay. much better. Okay, thank okay. you. Okay, sir. Okay. So uh, as we all know, uh, uh, among the many species of bamboo, uh, there are two indigenous species of bamboo in Ethiopia, uh, namely the Oxytenatera abyssinica, and uh, the Yushania alpina. Uh, the Oxytenatera abyssinica bamboo, uh, it covers 80% of the bamboo species and around 850 hectares of uh, uh, land approximately. And, and the highland bamboo or the Yushania alpina bamboo covering the remaining 20%. And uh, the Oxytenatera abyssinica bamboo, the largest cover, and it's found in the uh, uh, northwestern part of Ethiopia, while the Yushania alpina is central and south part of Ethiopia. Uh, so uh, my research focus is on the Oxytenatera abyssinica bamboo, uh, considering the uh, calm geometrical shape. These two species have uh, different uh, uh, geometry. Uh, uh, the Yushani Alpina, it is uh, of 10 to 12 centimeter thickness and it consists of a hollow cal. And it may, uh, I mean, it, it has uh, a height of a maximum height of 16.75 as previous researches uh, uh, reveal. Uh, while the Oxytenatera abyssinica bamboo, it has, uh, you know, it has uh, a solid, semi-solid and hollow sections. Uh, when you take uh, at 3.5 meter of this section, it, it consists of solid section from the bottom and semi-solid section at a certain height. And it consists of again, a hollow section. But these uh, uh, sections, it varies depending on the age, age. I mean, when the bamboo at two or at the first and second year age, I mean, first year, one year and two year age, uh, the semi-solid sections and the hollow sections is a little bit shorter while consisting of uh, less solid section. I mean, in, in, in a 3.5 meter uh, specimen. So uh, the, the mechanical property, considering the mechanical properties, of course, previous researches uh, revealed that the modulus of elasticity, uh, the modulus of elasticity and modulus of rupture, it is uh, 30 and 30.5 percent increment in both these uh, mechanical uh, properties. 
So my objective on this uh, research is uh, at, uh, at what age uh, this the solid section of Extenatera bamboo uh, uh, be uh, at what at what optimum age and to predict or to, to determine the age. And secondly, what is a concomitant or the respective bending strengths for the different uh, edges. So this, having these objectives, uh, applying the ISO 22157-1, uh, a total of uh, 60 columns were selected uh, based on the uh, uh, cluster sampling method. And uh, 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 it will be dried, I mean, with naturally by vertically stacking in the laboratory of Pardar University, Faculty of Civil Engineering Department. And uh, it is kept until the moisture content is 11 to 30% is achieved. Then uh, splitting is done through a uh, 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 splitter in the workshop so that how much the solid section and the semi-solid section and the hollow section in a 3.5 meter uh, bamboo specimen or uh, uh, in is uh, uh, measured. Then this was the, the simple uh, approach to, to uh, determine how, depending on the edgewise, uh, 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 portion of the, I mean, portion of the uh, solid section, semi-solid and hollow section. So this is uh, the area where the bamboo is collected, and in one of the region we call it metacal region. So uh, as it is shown, uh, the bamboo species, I mean, it's sketched as solid section, semi-solid and hollow sections. And then it is clustered, I mean, it's categorized and measurements have been conducted. Uh, and this is a simple, uh, I mean, it's a sketch how the cross sections look like when uh, the bamboo at 2.6 meter is sample, uh, solid section it's internals, uh, while here at two to six, I mean, 2.6 to three meters, how the hollow sections are look like, and the cross sections are beyond 3.2 meters having a hollow. So uh, systematically, we have a solid section here. It's a sample actually, and the uh, uh, other lengths up to the semi-solid sections LA, and the uh, hollow sections within within a 3.5 meter uh, specimen. So. Uh, and then next step, a, a flexural uh, to conduct the flexural test. A test rig is prepared, and uh, uh, using a UTS machine so that applying the load, we can. I I, I will start measuring. Uh, so the results show that basically two mechanical properties was conducted: the compressive and tensile strengths according to the ISO. Uh, 22, 50, uh, 157, uh, 1, 2019, 2020, 20, 20, sorry. So a mini strength of uh, 20, 35, and 52 mega pascal was resulted uh, uh, at the semi-solid, uh, solid and hollow sections respectively, an average to an average moisture of uh, 12 to 2% for two years age specimens. And there was, a three and eight percent compressive strengths for the edges of three and four, and with the same uh, with the same moisture content in the four uh, in three and four year age bamboos, and the tensile strengths uh, is done. It's a bog bone, um, uh, sorry, dog bone, uh, bo uh, dog bone shape that's based on the uh, outer sections. I mean, it it, it is. Uh, tensile strengths to 298, 146, and 112 megapascals uh, for two for age two, respectively, is resulted, and the result is increased uh, 
this 14 and 17 percent mean tensile strength was resulted for the age of uh, three and four at the stated sections. Uh, the other uh, uh, testing that's the main parts of the uh, research, the bending test result here, as I mentioned earlier, the age wise, the bamboo was categorized two, three, and four year, and uh, bottom diameter and solid section length, as, as, as previously uh, stated, and the internal length and the top diameter is. These are geometrically this measured, and uh, we have the ratio of the top end to bottom. Then the flexural strength and the midspan deflection is measured. These results from the uh, outputs are from the uh, UTS machine. Then, uh, based on the statistical, uh, the statistical analysis showed that the length of the solid section at edge four, and uh, where, where this is. Sorry, the horizontal, the ratio of top to bottom diameter, and this is the length of solid section. So for four years, it's expected, I mean, it's two point, an average of 2.8, 2.5 here for uh, a solid section length is resulted at a diameter ratio of, uh, uh, mean diameter ratio of 0 0.64. Uh, for H3, uh, when the ratio of the top to bottom diameter is uh, an average 0.77, while the length is less here, uh, 2.6 to 0.5 is resulted. Uh, the other one at age two, uh, care, uh, it's a 0.83 mean diameter ratio, top to bottom ratio, but the length of the solid section is uh, below 2.4. So uh, here from this result, we can uh, estimate or uh, show, uh, see that a maximum of up to 2.8.85 meter uh, solid section length is, is available at H4 for when the diameter ratio is uh, 0.64. And uh, the other uh, result from this uh, research is the bending strings. So the bending strings versus the diameter ratio or bending strengths versus bottom diameter. So there is, and the result is in three uh, specimens. Uh, I mean, uh, three types of specimens are uh, tested, conducted. So that here the, uh, uh, shown that the result. Similarly, at H3 and at H4. So the final, uh, bending result values, uh, the solid section is predicted linearly with 5.8D, 6.4D, and 7.2 times D for H23 and for respectively with the statistical values uh, in each sections. So here, the final uh, conclusion that is resulted from the statistical analysis. So that is, that's my presentation. It's a very short, uh, I, I finalized in this way. Thank you very much. That was a great presentation. I greatly enjoyed it. I have a lot of questions, but uh, we'll leave them for uh, later on. Uh, right. Stop, over to you. All right. All right. Okay. Uh, okay. Christopher? Yes, sorry, I uh, missed your part because my connection was not good. Okay, I will announce the next uh, speaker. The next speaker is uh, uh, CGA New from Hanway Agricultural University. Uh, she got, uh, uh, he got a Master of Forestry and Landscape Architecture of Hanway Architectural University. And uh, she's, wor he, or she's working on processing and utilization of bamboo and wood properties and application of biomass. Material. The title of the presentation is Effects of Hydrothermal Treatment on the Bending Properties of Mosul Bamboo. The time is uh, 10 minutes for your presentation. Please share your screen. Are you there, CGA? CGA, can you hear me? Oh, what's that? What's that? Okay, uh, please share your screen. Uh, please bear with me for one minute. 
after I share my screen with you. Can you all see my shared screen? Okay, okay. Yeah, we can see your screen. Please go ahead. Okay. 好，各位专家学者，大家好啊，非常开心。Experts, scholars, and greetings to you all. I'm very delighted to have this opportunity to share with you my current research results and application of the bamboo materials. This is the background comparing to the timber industry. The bamboo industry is more scattered, based on small workshops a low added value cannot compare with timber industries concentration and the industrialization. Low utilization ratio is partially due to the structure of the bamboo per se, because unlike timber, it cannot be cut into large DBH timbers. It can only be combined together as an engineering material. So based on different the diameter, it can be sliced into different parts. Only more proportion can be used and uh, a lot of waste. The utilization rate a ratio is less than 60% and the width of bamboo slices is less than 30 millimeter. So we can only use uh, bamboo materials to produce uh, flooring and vehicle floors, very low added value. So the origin of my project is based on the national key R&D program during the 14th five year plan period time. So our very purpose is try to improve the bamboo utilization ratio as well as uh, improve the added value. We try to first uh, develop the bamboo into bamboo slices and uh, make them into the laminated plywood. But uh, although the technology is very, it's not very new, but uh, we seldom think the corrugated bamboo mat plywood during the processing process we understand due to the poor toughness of bamboo material it severely limits uh, the form of bamboo products so we use uh, some uh, solution treatment and we also use a water bath um, treatment method based on the different temperature. You can see the concentration level, uh, the differences uh, with regard to elastic modulus and bending strengths. It's negatively correlated to the temperature and the concentration. So with a longer period of uh, higher temperature treatment, bamboo can become more flexible. But uh, there were no like uh, matured treatment solution being seen. That's uh, partially due to the mechanical nature of the bamboo has no linear relationship versus uh, flexibility of the bamboo. Only at the concentration of 0 0.1 of the treatment solution, the specimens have um, small modulus of elasticity. This slide shows uh, the radius of curvature. The darker the color is, you can see the higher percentage of the bamboo materials are. And 
the conclusion is when the concentration is 0 0.1 percentage, the toughening effect of bamboo is the most obvious. It explains why the toughness and the concentration level have no linear relationship. This is using FTIR testing method. You can see after this FTIR, there is a significant change in cellulose, hemicellulose, and the lignin in bamboo powder. Without treatment, you can see there is a small absorption peak here. Uh, in the interest time, I would uh, skip uh, the detailed elaboration of this graph. Next, I want to talk about microscopic analysis due to different uh, concentration percentage. You can see the bamboo fiber morphology is different. You can see the part of cavities when the concentration level is 0 0.1 percentage and there is a severe collapse when the concentration level is 1 percentage. This, uh, again, you can see the vascular changes before and after treatment. This slide shows you the application of toughened bamboo. It can be used for the improved bamboo crafts. On the right hand side is a light lamp. Previously, we used a rattan to produce uh, the lamps. But in recent years, uh, due to the export control and ban from Indonesia and Malaysia, Rattan's price surged in the international market. So we use the bamboo materials to replace rattan to cut the cost by about 70 percentage. But as a downside, using bamboo to replace rattan during the weaving process, it's very easy to break comparing to rattan. The flexibility of the bamboo is not as good. You can see a lot of breaking points, breakages. Previously, the company used manual or skillful workers to repair by using glues, adhesives, but it's very uh, low productivity and high labor cost. However, after our toughened treatment, you can see before and after toughened treatment on the left is before treatment. And on the right hand side, is the after treatment. You can see the radius of uh, curvature is significantly reduced. And to some point, it can break just like uh, steel materials. That is before treatment, but after the treatment, uh, you can see there's no breakage, no splitting of the bamboo. That shows the performance after treatment uh, improved thanks to the absorption of the energy. The right hand side, two pictures uh, showed the final result after the toughened treatment process. 
you can see this is a very large size product, but there's no breakages. These are the bamboo products and crafts already under mass production being exported to US and Nordic countries. After toughened treatment, you can see we can have a more diversified combination of products. Second application is uh, to use this on the corrugated bamboo mat. It is a very good heat insulation result. It's already being widely used in the Qatar's uh, World Football Cup. You see a lot of container, so-called container hotels. They use uh, many steel boards for the construction of this container hotel. But uh, the heat or insulation effect is not as good as bamboo boards because a lot of complaints um, uh, said uh, with the air uh, conditioning system, and then the temperature of the board can cool down very rapidly, but after a while, it would raise again. This is the downside of steel boards. Originally, we can use uh, steel plus foams to increase the insulation and to keep the heat. We can use a bamboo actually corrugated boards instead of forms. However, the bamboo boards very easy to break. You can see even before the lamination process, the board or the mechanical features already lost before adding pressures. You can see uh, once uh, the radius of a uh, curvature is the largest, then the toughness of the bamboo is the minimum. But uh, our solution is a uh, toughened treatment. After this treatment, we can improve the utilization rate by 70 percentage. Of course, this is only a lab test result. Secondly, we can have a wider selection on the wave distance, margins, and slopes. Next, uh, the prospects of bamboo toughening technology. Currently, we know that uh, a lot of uh, inner decorations inside the automobile and uh, uh, aviation interior by using bamboo fibers. But due to the properties of uh, fibers, sometimes it's not uh, strong enough, not toughened enough, especially with a larger span. It's very easy to break. Especially for those unique shapes, it's difficult to apply traditional bamboo fibers, uh, but with this toughened process, we can use bamboo fibers more widely. Previous uh, speakers also talk about this uh, fire treatment method. And then the cellulose will uh, crystallize and the third. That's okay. Thanks. Okay, I will finish. And, uh, 
and with the thermal treatment to bend the calm it is not really easy to do it's not very efficient so our uh, elasticity or the resilient uh, ductility enhancement technology may be useful okay i uh, thank you very much for uh, your listening if you're interested in this technology you can contact me through email okay that's all thank you Thank you very much for those words, uh, CJ New. Um, I don't know where Christopher went, <laughs> so I'll take over from him. Um, we have uh, our next speaker, who is Bei Bei Jin from Xi'an University of Architecture and Technology. Uh, with a presentation called Study on the Axial Compressive Performance of Sprayed Composite Mortar, Original Bamboo Composite Columns, and Engineering Application. Um, Jean Bebe is a doctoral candidate in Structural Engineering of Xi'an University of Architecture and Technology, is mainly engaged in the research of modern bamboo structure, and he has published two SCI papers, two EI papers, and more than 10 patents. So dear uh, colleagues and everyone, can you hear me? Thank you. Okay, I will go through my presentation now. I'm from the Xi'an University of Architecture and Technology and PhD student. I'm talking about a study on axial compressive performance of sprayed composite mortar original bamboo uh, composite columns and engineering application. So I will talk about background first. First, the construction sector um, has a low raw material and resource use efficiency with a serious pollution and energy consumption. So if we really want to choose the uh, best uh, feedstock or best material for the construction, currently we try to be uh, lightweight, environment-friendly, and sustainable. China has a huge production output of bamboo. Naturally, people are looking into bamboo as a possible candidate. Advantages include short growth cycle, green, eco-friendly, high strength to weight ratio, good deformability, and disadvantages include irregular geometry, initial natural defects, rot and moth-eaten durability issue. So when we combine the two sides, we try to use a composite design. In our team, we propose a new type of bamboo structure sprayed composite mortar and round bamboo. And we published some papers in Chinese and foreign journals. We spray a kind of composite mortar composed of mortar combination, polystyrene particles, and mineral adhesives on the surface of bamboo skeleton. And after a period of curing, it integrates uh, sound insulation, heat preservation, and fire retardation and other structural functions. Okay, I will talk about uh, the second part, the axial compressive performance of spread composite mortar round bamboo composite columns. It can improve the global stability capacity, fully utilize the materials. It is simple to fabricate and easily assembled. It is uh, green in the whole process of construction and use. It's coming from round bamboo. And after using this a composite structure, it's even better in terms of uh, provenance. I've designed the best specimen, longer and shorter columns. We have uh, round, short columns. And also we have uh, the coated mortar or spade mortar coated columns and thirdly alignment a composite mortar 
uh, and the cross section of a square, and also a round cross section with a protrusion, and also a lined cross section, round cross section column. And also, we can have some mix and match, uh, just uh, some uh, dimension specifications of different specimens and the cross section and uh, loading mode. We have a food section or only load onto the bamboo part of it. We are actually looking to the loading methodology of uh, reinforced concrete within steel iron tube and also some failure modes. The first short round column, and we can see the wall is fractured. B, C, D, E are composite. We have protruding, aligned, and square or roundish uh, cross section. We have uh, the mortar failure or inward fracture of the comb. And also for the slender column, um, we at the two sides, we have uh, local failure, but not along the whole length. And also analyzed uh, some data first the diameter of the bamboo for a round bamboo short column, when the diameter increases, ductility will drop. But uh, for the composite column, it's uh, axial compressive strength, and the maximum strength will go up as the diameter increases. Secondly, with the spread composite mortar compared with the short column square vis-a-vis -vis the round cross section, you can see that the axial stiffness is not significantly improved and the ultimate load decreases slightly. The ductivity is greatly improved. And spread composite mortar, you can see this is a circular cross section. The axial stiffness, ductility, and ultimate load are greatly improved in the circular cross section. And uh, this is the uh, for the circular cross section plus only bamboo pressed. You can see the axial stiffness and the ductility are improved, while the ultimate load is not here. This is the sprayed composite mortar slander column. After spraying the mortar, it will improve the stability, the axial stiffness and ultimate load and improved, but the ductility is not because it is uh, shifting from stability failure to stiffness failure. The both ends, they have a brittle failure. So the ductility is not improved. Cross section form for short column, full section loading mode, the mechanical performance of composite short column with a square cross section are better than those with a circular cross section with only bamboo compressed. The mechanical performance of composite short term, uh, short columns with both cross sections are basically equivalent. Loading mode for short column square cross section the mechanical performance of composite short columns with a full section loading are higher than those with the only bamboo pressed because the mortar and the bamboo will withstand the load. But with a circular cross section, the axial stiffness and ultimate load on the full section loading are higher. And the only bamboo, when only the bamboo part is pressed, it has a higher ductility and standardless ratio. The basically the length to diameter ratio. And for the round bamboo slender column, the greater the slenderless ratio, the smaller the axial stiffness and ultimate load and the ductility. And also we are using the finite uh, element uh, model to have extended analysis to look into the height of the column as an factor. With the height of the column increasing, the axial compressive stiffness and ultimate load of the round bamboo slender column and the composite slender column decrease, but the mild height, but the mid height lateral displacement increases. The ductility of the round bamboo column increases and the composite column is right the opposite. And also the thickness of the sprayed composite mortar layer for the slender column 
the axial compressive stiffness and ultimate load of composite cylinder column increase with the increase of the thickness of a spread composite mortar, but the ductility is basically unchanged. This one is initial bending of the round bamboo for the slender column. With the initial bending of the round bamboo increasing, the ultimate load of the round bamboo slender column and the composite slender column decrease. The round bamboo slender column, the axial compressive stiffness decreases, but ductility will increase. For the composite slender column, the axial compressive stiffness and the ductility are basically unchanged. The calculation formulae for the short column were using the elastic ultimate bearing capacity. Just as if we are calculating the elast uh, the capacity of the reinforced concrete uh, with the iron tube. And uh, we are showing some uh, fitting curves. And for slender column, our assumption is that it is thin walled axial compression member with a variable section and thickness and initial bending hinged at both ends. So this is based on uh, established balance equation, a mechanical equation formula. And then we can extrapolate the buckling capacity of slender columns on the axial compression. This is the validation result. The error is within the 10% range, indicating the effectiveness of the calculation method. Uh, could you uh, finalize in one or two minutes, please? Thank you. Oh, okay, no problem. Uh, just uh, engineering application. In 2017, we have designed a single story bamboo skeleton building. First, a bamboo skeleton installation applying waterproof materials and a filled EPS board spray composite mortar, and then install the roof panels, roof waterproofing construction and the whole building in the end is a real life uh, project and a simple conclusion. The first part is the failure mode of short column is the overall destruction of the bamboo. The failure mode of slender column is the overall buckling. Different factors have different effects on the axial compression performance, uh, but all the details were presented before. Calculation formula of compressive bearing capacity of short columns is derived from the superposition principle. And the calculation of both formulae are valid according to the test. Thank you very much. Uh, you can uh, contact me later for more questions. Thank you. Back to you. Okay. Thank you very much for that presentation, Bei Bei. In, and um, that was a very interesting presentation once again. Um, I um, need to apologize to Rima, who I skipped in my introductions. Uh, I will pass over to Christopher to introduce Rima. Uh, Rima will not be delivering a uh, presentation herself. She has a recorded presentation because she's not feeling particularly well. Uh, over to you, Christopher. Yeah, thank you, David. So the next speaker, as we say, yeah. is Ruima. The presentation is recorded. A brief introduction about Ruima, a PhD candidate from School of Engineering in Tianjin University, majoring in structural engineering. She's engaged in the study of steel and bamboo structure. At the present, she's doing the research on the fabricated bamboo structures with low cost, which is sponsored by the National Key Research and Development Project of China. The title of the presentation of uh, uh, Rui uh, Ma is uh, Structural Grading of Mozo Bamboo Cone Based on Its Maximum External Diameter. I don't know who is starting the recorder, please. But Rui Ma is here, right? Ah, no, the, she's starting the recording. OK, please start the record. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, moderator. I'm really sorry to, to have to um, give my presentation in this form. OK, please. Ladies and gentlemen, 
I'm delighted to have the chance to address you on this special occasion. The topic of my presentation is structural grading of muscle fungal cup based on its minimum external diameter. The part of my talk are as follows. Well, let's move on the first part of this topic. Uh, in the production and construction process of traditional buildings using industrial materials such as steel, concrete, and brick, a large amounts of greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide are released into the atmosphere, causing global warming problems. All nice materials with the ability to store carbon are widely considered as substitutions of these conventional building materials like wood and uh, bamboo. Uh, there has been a long history of natural bamboo has, as um, construction materials around the world, especially in the tropics and subtropics. Uh, nowadays, there is still an uh, ocean of, of bamboo structures constructed by bamboo camps in China. However, there are uh, constructed uh, the basic of experience in journal rather than using modern design tools, uh, restricting the use of bamboo in construction mm. and the kind of their material. The geometric, uh, physical, and uh, mechanical pro properties of bamboo vary from one to another. To achieve the goal of standardized design, the foremost thing is to sort every piece of bamboo uh, into specific grades. Attempts has been made to establish great methods of bamboo cones, but there are still some uh, deficiencies remain to be improved. Most of existing studies focus on the classification process of natural bamboo to control the qualities of engineered bamboo products which is now suitable for the use of bamboo cups in construction. So I also provide the principles and the procedures of grading bamboo cups when constructing bamboo structures. The specific grades of any bamboo species have not been defined. Meanwhile, Bamboo camps are supposed to be treated before utilizing in construction. Geometric, uh, physical, and uh, mechanical properties may be affected by different treatment strategies. The influx has not been considered before. Consequently, they study attempts to establish specific standards and uh, give the characteristic values of muscle bamboo clamps with different treatments. Let's go to the methodology part of this study. As we all know, visual grading is a uh, non destructive and easy way to solve bamboo cups according to their geometric properties in practice. It's quite important and uh, convenient to grade the bamboo cups with a certain geometric character. From the point of view of facilitating structural design, we hope also bamboo cups could be designed like two tubes. Thus, the diameter and thickness are two key parameters to represent them. However, the external diameter and thickness uh, changes along the length of muscle bamboo cups. Most safety results could be obtained designing according to the minimum external diameter. Uh, therefore, muscle bamboo cups could be regarded as wrong types to facilitate the analysis and uh, design muscle bamboo structures that is by involving hypothesis. According to the market research results, we found out that the minimum external diameter of muscle bamboo terms utilized in construction are mainly distributed from 
60 millimeter and uh, 130 millimeter. That's half ways of most of them group columns are uh, presented as shown in this table. 653 also found book camps with mass of two to three meters uh, randomly selected as study samples of which 210 were untreated, 283 were with chemical preservatives treatment, and uh, uh, 160 were in treatment, namely carbonization. Two of the bamboo camps were put in the same environment for one week to avoid the influence of the environment. Death and uh, perimeter were measured by the tip, while the external diameter and thickness were measured by the uh, vernier caliper, and every comb was weighted by electric scales. External diameter of each end were determined by two ways, one of which in the average value of two perpendicular measurements made across offset ones on the outer surface, another is calculated by a uh, perimeter. The relation between the two measures is shown in the figure. It's it can be seen that the difference between them are generally within 5%. Meanwhile, marrying the meter is more convenient uh, than marrying maximum and the minimum diameters in practice. Uh, therefore, the meter is recommended to determine the diameter of most of them become in this study. As average, both the list of smaller and uh, larger end, external taper, internal taper, and uh, linear miles are calculated uh, based on the following formulas. What is the impact of sample size? First step method is adopted for uh, statistical analysis of dimension parameters of different ways from group. The results. As can be seen in this figure, uh, the minimum external diameter of UT and CT are mainly uh, distributed between uh, 16 millimeter and 135 millimeter, where the value of UT is mainly distributed between 16 millimeter to 120 millimeter. Uh, thus, it is strongly recommended that UT, CT, and HT could be divided into five, five, and four groups respectively. The distribution was thickness of smaller and after 5,000 times sampling is obtained. Representative results are shown here. The fitting results show that. The distribution of both thickness is normal distribution. The fifth uh, fractal is regarded as characteristic value and can be calculated according to this formula. The results are listed in this table. Comparing with characteristic wall thickness value of each grade, it can be seen that the wall thickness uh, approximately linear increases with the grade growing, uh, which means that uh, after the external diameter, the thicker the wall. What the test significantly uh, decreases after treatment process in the same grade, uh, the wall thickness of UT is larger than that of CT and the uh, HT the influence of treatment is weakened gradually with the weight increasing. Results prove that the study of structure grading is essential for muscle bamboo camp products with any new treatment technology.
conducting the same manner to obtain the distribution of external and uh, internal taper. According to the fitting results, the characteristic value can be calculated and listed in the table. Comparison of characteristic external and internal taper value between different grades is shown in the figures. It could be inferred that uh, treatment process may increase the national stability of muscle bamboo comes internal. Taper value has no adverse variety regulation, but fluctuates at a uh, uh, level of 0.38%. Thus, the characteristic internal taper value of every grade can be considered as 0.38% for convenience. So the distribution of the mass. Uh, the value of UT is here by uh, CT and HT. Just thinking that the weight of muscle bamboo comes reduced after treatment due to the reduction of moisture content. The increase of grace linear mass increases approximately linearly. The the increase rates of CT and HT are slower than that of UT providing that uh, the effect of treatment process is greater for the curves with larger external diameter. Let's move on the conclusion part. External diameter of muscle bamboo cam could be determined by the uh, perimeter in, uh, in practice based on its um, external diameter also, bamboo could be divided into four or five ways. Treatment process has great influence on the uh, geometry and the physical properties. More thickness and linear mass reduce significantly after treatment process. The study of structural grading is essential for the products with any new treatment technology. And the most important of all. Uh, characteristic value of branded muscle bamboo caps is obtained in this study. However, this paper is a preliminary explosion of bamboo grading. Uh, much more data is needed to validate and improve the results of the study in practice. Meanwhile, the study on the mechanical properties of each point has been carried on recently. At last, I'd like to thank the uh, sponsorship of the National Key Research and Development Project and uh, changing postgraduate scientific research innovation project for this study. I thanks to Professor Chu Hashan, Associate Research Fellow Yan Sheng Zhu, and uh, Lin Zhao for their help on this study. At the end of my presentation. Thank you for your attention. Well, thank you very much, uh, Rima. That was a very interesting presentation. I'm going to certainly uh, to reach out to you to discuss some of those things you talked about grading, I found them very interesting. Um, thank you. Um, our final presentation is to be delivered by Daniel Hindman from Virginia Tech. It's called Evaluation of Tray Guide Bamboo Sublumiana Bending Strength Perpendicular to the Fibers Along Comb Height. Um, thank you. Don't have anything about oh Daniel Hedman, yeah, PE PhD, a lead green associate, is an associate professor in the Department of Sustainable Biomaterials at Virginia Tech, and a principal faculty member in the Myers Lawson School of Construction. Dr. Hinman teaches classes in wood mechanics, green building systems, design of wood structures, and timber engineering. Research and extension topics have included green building, design of wood structures, and construction safety. Dr. Hinman 
currently serves as the director of IC Safe, the Center for Innovation in Construction Safety, Health, and Well-Being. Recent research projects have included the use of US-based wood species for cross-laminated timber production, defining the loads placed under pond trusses by workers falling, and the reuse and recycling of wood sheathing on green construction sites. Over you to Dr. Hinman. Thank you. Thank you. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, good to be with you. Um, I want to acknowledge my co-authors who are, um, uh, I have a long list of them. I will uh, uh, explain that a little bit later on. Um, uh, myself and Jonas Hopman uh, from Industrial Design at Virginia Tech have been the, the lead faculty members on this. Um, uh, this is a project that uh, evolved from some of our other work that uh, that we've been doing. Um, just to uh, state some some introduction material, as we think about bending of panels or beams, we usually think about four things: the bending strength, the shear strength, deflection, and finally the bearing strength. And the bearing strength is uh, the subject of what we'll do today. Um, our current research has been focused on studying lightly modified bamboo panels. So here is a, a diagram showing a cross section of those. So we are taking uh, relatively solid combs of bamboo. Uh, these are from uh, Trey Guy, um, which is uh, Bambusa blumiana, um, and uh, using them so we are flattening the tops of the poles or cutting the poles in half uh, to provide glue area but we're trying to maintain the section modules of the pole section itself and on the right is a image of, of one of these panels in testing and as we started testing these panels uh, we started talking about where we should be placing the pieces of bamboo and um, uh, Jonas has a strong interest in parametric design, and so where we, we are able to actually um, look at the uh, scanned poles of bamboo that we have and then choose where we want to place them within the composite. And uh, kind of the question that started this was the first one here, should we try to place the nodes of the bamboo layers at support points for the beams? And as we we talked about that, said it does, you know, uh, and I think common knowledge is that that the uh, we'll call it the crushing strength for now, but we'll take that apart in in a little bit. Or the bearing strength um, is stronger at the nodes. Anecdotally, um, we felt that, and but we wanted to understand what is the difference um, between the node and the internode. And also, how does crushing strength vary over the, the pole height? And so getting back to my large list of uh, co-authors, these are my students who have participated in the 2019 and 2021 SBIO 5324 Timber Engineering class. This is really a special topics class in timber engineering, mostly focused upon wood, but I've managed to stretch the definition of wood into bamboo. You could think of bamboo as kind of a rayless form of, of wood composites in a hollow section. And we combined um, our, our laboratory and classroom experiences with this course and um, looked at literature, uh, developed a research plan, and then conducted the experiments and then some preliminary analysis. And I found this very helpful. Um, the level of bamboo research funding support in the United States is very low. So for me, this was a nice option to be able to incorporate this into a class where I had kind of a ready workforce uh, for me. And so myself and Jonas Hopman supervised the students uh, as they conducted this. Our research objectives were to measure the uh, again, I, I think I'll use crushing strength for the last time here because the correct term is bending strength perpendicular to fiber, and that's what's listed in ISO 22157. We use 
eight different bamboo poles uh, that were tray guy poles. These were commercially purchased and sent from Vietnam. Um, so unfortunately, one of the uh, uh, disadvantages of my research is that we do not have a, an exact position of where each pole is located within the overall comb of a bamboo pole. So each of the poles is four meters long. And essentially we sectioned each of those four meter long pieces into uh, about 50 centimeter um, lengths that then we tested for the bending strength perpendicular to fiber. We tested both internode and node sections. I do realize that ISO 22157 um, is only uh, uh, states that, that only the internode should be tested, the area between nodes, uh, but we wanted to understand the difference between the poles along the length of the poles and with the node and the internode. And finally, as many others have done, we wanted to try to correlate the mechanical strength properties to, to physical dimensions of the bamboo poles themselves. So as I mentioned, we had uh, eight poles uh, commercially obtained. Uh, we do believe they're Bambusa blumiana. However, um, this is one of the other problems with uh, um, importing uh, this material commercially. It may have been Bambusa stenostachia. Uh, four meter long. They had between 19 and 21 nodes in that four meter section. And um, uh, we cut them into between 38, 56 millimeter long uh, pieces. So uh, overall, uh, we had something like 650 specimens. And this is chapter 15, the bending perpendicular to fibers. And we calculated the bending strength and stiffness terms. And um, again, just to, to think about this, is this a compression test or a bending test? Well, if we're talking about wood or a solid composite material, we would be talking about a compressive test here where we have a uniform load throughout the entire section and a uniform stress following that. However, as we think about a ring and then we uh, think about a ring being compressed, if we take a quarter of that section and look at the forces on that quarter, we'll have a force uh, from the top of the ring vertically, but then the corresponding force is going to be at the center of the ring uh, uh, with a moment arm, uh, the distance of the radius. So what happens as you compress these rings is that that moment becomes the critical force within the the ring and that's what causes failure. So you tend to see a, a splitting of the rings, um, either uh, what, what's called the north-south, which is the top and bottom, or the east-west, which is the uh, right and left. Now, uh, an essential part of doing ISO 22157 is to track the diameter and the radius of the rings. And uh, we decided rather than trying to measure with calipers and, and um, uh, uh, have, have difficulty with that, we would use uh, some computer scanning. So we used Rhinoceros 3D. So uh, we scanned the uh, ring sections on a flatbed scanner and then imported those pictures into Rhinoceros 3D. And using several of the tools in Rhinoceros, uh, we are able to pick points along the inner and outer ring of each, uh, the inner and outer uh, circumference of each of the rings and determine the radius and diameter from those. Um, so we felt uh, pretty confident in this. Um, of course, there is a smoothing algorithm in in Rhinoceros 3D. So we were able to get more of an averaged um, radius value that we could then use. Uh, this, is, this is the testing of samples. Um, on the left, we have a, an internode ring and you can see how this has started to fail um, after compression. We used a set of uh, strips of, of uh, 
rubber on top and bottom of the sample just to apply pressure so that that force was not applied at one point. And uh, the picture on the right you can see is a node, and you can see a a uh, about a about a fifteen degree uh, fracture going from the upper right to the lower left in that piece. Uh, now, I said we tested some 600 samples uh, as we did this with eight poles, and uh, data analysis then became our main challenge. And um, uh, so here are some of our results. So this is the, the strength um, in, in MPA along the pole. Uh, there are four different strengths given for tension and compression in the north, south, and tension and compression in the east, west. The north, south would correspond to the um, top and bottom, and the east, west to the left and right. Um, what you're seeing here is the complete pole. So the points that are, are much higher or much lower correspond to the nodes versus the internodes. So to, to study the rest of the data uh, for all this variability, we decided to separate the node and internode values um, into separate groups. And this helped us uh, uh, gain a little more understanding of it. Uh, we did see a lot of variability within these data sets. And uh, however, the strength terms do appear to be normally distributed and the stiffness terms were a log normal distribution. Overall, the strength values at the nodes were approximately 2.9 times the strength at the internode. And we did not really see a generalized trend in bending strength perpendicular to fiber along the pole height. If I go back to that image, and if you look at the, for instance, the, uh, the black circles, uh, starting on the left-hand side of this graph would be the bottom of the pole, and the right side would be the, the top of the pole. There may be a generalized trend, but, but the, uh, you can see there's, there's actually kind of more variation um, between the nodes sometimes than along the length of the pole. Uh, then finally, we we uh, correl we tried to do some correlations of the different strength and stiffness values with the uh, dimensions of the co of the uh, individual rings. So we used the outer diameter, inner diameter, and thickness. And these were the correlations we found meaningful for the internode. The stiffness was correlated with outer diameter and thickness. For the nodes, the stiffness was correlated with outer diameter, inner diameter, and thickness. And then the stress, the compressive stress in the north-south and the tension stress in the east-west were now both correlated with one, two minutes, inner yeah, diameter. Please. I've got one more and I'm done. So just our conclusions Thank were you. that we found that the scanning methods were very helpful with, with determining the diameter and radius. And we found this to be an effective learning tool to, to show students how to conduct research and uh, get some research fund, get some research done that has uh, less funding opportunities. And thank you. Oh, that was a fascinating presentation, Daniel. I, I really very much enjoyed it and uh, keen to share ideas on how uh, we go about uh, researching with students as a way to overcome difficulties with funding. Um, and the, the question. So I think we now enter the session of questions. And I have been trying, I've been scanning the questions as they come along. I don't know about you, Christopher, but I haven't seen that many questions popping up. Just one a moment ago. There is one that came right at the beginning. Uh, Maybe we can ask to rewrite the question in case we missed. I think it's easier, right? So there absolutely. Is, uh... So, uh, yeah, so if you have any questions, point. please type in the chat, right? So it's complex for us to go through all the discussion, right? Yeah, well, I've, I've, I've only picked up three questions coming up. I have loads, but um, I've only seen from the audience uh, three. I don't know if you've seen any other. Um, I'm going to start one I noticed a long time ago for, for Kent, which said, 
how to determine the pre-stress force required and can be without pre-stressing. Any requirement on the fish mouth joint example, gap allowed to cater workmanship constraint in producing the fish mouth joint. And thank you for, uh, for sharing. So Kent, are you on the call? Yeah, I'm there. Just a second. I'm going to share my screen if that's all right, because it's easier yep. to point at. Can you see the presentation slides? Yes. Okay. Yep. Um, so it's a good question. Um, the, the very short answer is trial and error. Um, a fish mouth joint on its own can only resist compression um, aligned with the uh, aligned with what we have as the beam element. Obviously, it has it doesn't have a tension capacity and it doesn't have a flexural capacity. By introducing the the I bar, we introduce the potential for a tension strut. <clears throat> in which case, as we showed over here on the right, um, we can get a tension compression couple where we have tension in the I bar and compression at either the top or the bottom of the comb. And so that can be designed by simple mechanics. I mean, anybody who's designed reinforced concrete would recognize, in fact, this, this type of approach. Um, how we determine the, the, the pre-compression force was actually by trial and error. We wanted the largest pre-compression that we could get, which would maximize the, the, the moment capacity without crushing the column in which case we did a number of, of, of trials to make sure that we were in the right ballpark. And you can see the force that we ended up with. That's an average force. It did vary a reasonable amount of about 8,500 kilonewtons, which was fairly significant. And we, of course, ensured that a, a node was nearby, which, which helps us out. We are presently actually running tests um, that look at what we can, um, what level of, of I-bar force we could run um, based on, for instance, the, the size of the fender washer and what have you, um, and, and this will be forthcoming. So I hope that that answers the question. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll follow on with a question. If you keep that slide open, Kent. Okay, sure. Um, because I and again, I remind you, and, and, and you know this, that, that you know the focus of this study was not the connection itself, yeah, but rather I, the I methodology. Had... Yeah, I had two questions, actually. Uh, one is that when you've got open there, now you've mentioned the compression parallel to the fibers there being of the order of 36.5 megapascals. I struggle to, to imagine what would have been the stresses perpendicular to the fibers, knowing that they're much weaker, and how the failure would be governed by something in the parallel fibers instead of the crushing of the column behind. Can you sort of run us through what failure modes you were observing there. Sorry, perpendicular to the fire. I mean, there really isn't. Yeah, because well, I there guess is we, perpendicular guess stress so in, the, in, the, in the vertical column. In the vertical column? Yeah. Those stresses yeah, I mean, would there were, be transferred. It, it, it sort of transferred. Um, I mean, obviously, the shear is transferred by friction. And we actually did not have a problem with crushing into the column at that particular location. It really was okay. um, a failure on the beam element. Now, keep in mind the beam element, although it's drawn here, um, the beam element was very slightly smaller than the column element. Okay. And um, the other question, did you check if these connections could be predicted using the ISO com component capacities method? I think you would struggle with it, um, partially because the bolt portion of the connection, this 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 has a very low capacity um, based on the equations that we have in there, uh, which which you and I both know are very conservative, um, and so we would have. Um, I got to be careful how I say this. We would have underpredicted the average behavior if we're looking at nominal types of properties. We actually would have been pretty good on the. Um, let me pull up that slide. We would be actually reasonably good on the characteristic. Okay. Um, that's more by luck than good management. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll pick up this one another day with you. Um, no, we, we, we get a lot to pick up on this, I assure you. <laughs> Christopher, you, have you picked another question? Because I've, I've, I have another one that I've, I noticed that someone had raised. 
I think there is a question in the chat box here, yeah, repeated from Jim. Uh, he's asking to Chuo, Meng, Luisa, what's stopping the industry to use clean tech, renewable energy to grow bamboo plus agroforestry, manufacture bamboo products, CLT, biocomposite, as well as in construction? Context. In uh, ultra cost efficient things like solar thermal induction, AE, AIESS plus micro factories exist that can further stay with the infrastructure buildings after construction order is, is wasted and it doesn't not use lithium or gas or any toxic chemicals. Who is willing to reply? In any case, Jim, if you are connected, you can unmute yourself, right? So, and you can ask directly, I read your question. Luisa, do you want to give some I comments? Can ask, I, I can. Uh, I can try to to answer to the Italian. Uh, looking at the Italian situation, I think in Italy, first of all, there there are not a lot of bamboo so far. Is growing the plantation, so uh, the the material will be more material will be available in the in the next future. Uh, but I think the two are the main. Uh, uh, limits of bamboo in this uh, in this moment. One is a a, a cultural feeling that uh, bamboo in Italy is uh, um, is something that is uh, uh, exotic, and so there is some cultural feeling to to over overcome. And um, second is that uh, is the standards, and uh, also this. Is something that uh, is uh, is uh, is something that uh, we are dealing with. So I think also this is something that could be overcome. That's good. For and, the, uh, for as the, Italian as well, you know, I'm very happy to hear that you are more and more involved in the Italian development of bamboo. Um, I don't know if we have other comments. Yeah, Jim replied to you. Thanks, Luisa. Uh, I cannot find any other question at the moment, David. I don't know if someone in the I, chat is willing to add us. Some... I, I have seen one com question okay, as well. You want to... It's it's from Pradeep uh, Kumar. And I think it's a question directed to Daniel. And it's that uh, this is either compressive or compression strength but not bending strength. Can I get an explanation from the author? Uh, Daniel, do you want to tackle that one? Or shall we pass it on to the authors of ISO 22157? Well, I'll, I'll take a stab and, and then uh, let them fill in. But um, but I, I I hope my my little graphic there uh, cleared that up, that that really it's acting kind of as an arch, those those uh, quarter sections and... and um, Again, the the nature of bamboo, where there's there's no razor cross structures, um, that moment now becomes the critical source of failure, as the uh, the ring is kind of pried apart. Yeah, so I hope Pradeep is uh, satisfied with that answer. And I would compliment by saying that the when ISO twenty two one five seven was written, the intention was to describe. What was happening at to the uh, to the fibers in that failure mode, uh, and it's it's a prying, as you just said, uh, that occurs, uh, and not a perspective from the point of view of the calm, which are, yes, it looks like and, a question of calm, and that is what we we observed as we tested it that the the kind of uh, the the section would hinge at the top and the bottom. Um, and and break apart, and it really kind of broke along that uh, cardinal direction, that north, south, east, west, into uh, two or four pieces, as it did. So it, it's it's a view of the point of view of, of the material and not of of the section. Right. I, I have some of my own questions for uh, for some uh, for for the speakers. Um, okay. David, can I just add to that comment a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I and I texted uh, uh, Dan, uh, Dan uh, like a private message. One of the concerns that I have in using that particular method with very thick walled elements is we definitely have an arching behavior. 
And that does change the resultant force at the east-west location a little bit. Um, I, I would be, you know, we, we think about thick walled and thin walled pipe, for instance, and we tend to think about D over T of 10 being the, uh, uh, the, 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 the differentiator there when we're talking about pressure pipe. I think we do need to kind of look at this test and, and think about whether there is a differentiation and a slight change in behavior, whether we have a relatively thin walled element um, or a much thicker walled element uh, as, as was shown in the images. Um, it's just a, just a comment. I think there's a little bit more differentiation that probably has to go on. Oh, and, and, and I would add when, when you have a node there, it, it, you probably have something completely different as well. Um, I, I don't think if you have a node there, you know what's going on personally. I think that we <laughs> no, I don't wouldn't do that. Do. Personally, I wouldn't do that. I think it would be interesting uh, to look at this analysis also, not just in terms of stresses, but also in terms of capacities uh, to see if there's easy trends there as well. Okay, I have uh, a few scattered questions. I know there'll be a few Christoph, uh, Christopher uh, have as well. Um, I have one for um, uh, Luisa Molari, and it was that you've pointed out that there could have been some degradation to the uh, non-fiber elements, that sort of the parenchyma between the fibers. Um, are you intending to do some test that assesses the degradation to this sort of material? And what test were you thinking of? Yes, uh, do, you, uh, do you mean um, for the UV um, damage, right? And the heat damage as well. Oh, the, okay. The yes. Uh, no, um, I, I was thinking to to share test something that uh, that test. is uh, yeah something that is uh, on the uh, that test the intra fiber uh, material. Yeah. And and share will be your choice. Yeah, could be, could be from from the material, from the mechanical point of view, uh, from the microscopic point of view, we we already have seen uh, uh, that uh, in both the case uh, in the in the heat treatment and in the UV ray, uh, there is a damage. Uh, uh, in also the fibers uh, gets uh, sort of uh, delaminate, not 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 delaminated. It's something that uh, you can you can see the different layer of the fibers. But uh, in the longitudinal direction, it's fine. I mean, there is no uh, cut in the in the fibers. But uh, on the on the um, uh, surface, you can see the the fibers that that uh, the, the the different layers of the fiber, for example. So uh, both from microscopical point of view, you can uh, we can uh, look at it at it. Or uh, from the macroscopic point of view, uh, I think sure test uh, to be fine. Yeah, okay, excellent. Thank you very much. Um, I have another question for Rima, but I don't know if Christopher, you do have any questions that you would like to ask the, the, the presenters? Fine, yeah, yeah, she replied with the uh, questions, David, and uh, yeah, we we have to try to close the session because in theory we have to finish now, right? So we have some... In a couple of minutes, yeah, yeah. I'm just yeah, gonna... yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, but please go ahead with your question, yeah. Rima, I have a question for you. Um, we, of course, you're working in a topic very close to my heart, which is grading. And you talked about linear mass and how linear mass changes with the treatments. But what I didn't see in those analysis is whether you considered uh, moisture content. Were, was this linear mass normalized to uh, a certain moisture content or, or uh, was moisture content considered when you were measuring linear mass? Uh, thank you for your question. Uh, I put the bamboo in the same environment to keep them to the same moisture content, but I haven't tested the moisture content uh, one by one. Okay, thank you. Okay, Christopher, now we are drawing to an end. Yeah. According uh, to the program, we have the closing words. So, David, absolutely. you have uh, two minutes, and uh, we have Durai Jeroman for three minutes. Yeah, excellent. 
So we draw to a close of the 20... Say there, please go ahead, and then we will ask to the right to give a closing remark at the end of this Excellent. very interesting session. Thank you, Christopher, for uh, working today with me. Um, so we now draw to the close of the 2022 International Conference Bamboo, a very sustainable construction material, and the Third World Symposium of Sustainable Biocomposite Materials and Structures. Thank you all, the team who have supported these sessions from Inbar, the interpreters, moderators, and presenters. Over these eight sessions, we have listened to fascinating presentations about bamboo, bamboo, timber, and biocomposites. The advances in these fields are heartening and show that there are many like-minded academics and professionals keen to potentiate and promote these materials as a more sustainable alternative. Please look out for the publications linked to this conference, the special issue for bamboo and bio-based construction material in the journal Engineering Structures, the special issue in the journal for Sustainable Structures, and the conference proceedings by Springer uh, or Taylor Francis. And I now pass you to Durai Yaramadal from the Global Program of uh, the Global Program Director of IMBA. Thank you. Oh, someone's asked, Wei Jin has asked for a group photo as well. So shall we go with the Greek photo now or after Durai has spoken? Now we are ready. Yeah, I think we can take it now and then leave. Uh, yeah, to yeah, yeah. Write a closing speech. We can smile. So who is taking the photo? This is my only question. David, we cannot see you. I think your camera is off. I don't know if this is intentionally or not. I couldn't see David, but uh, I can I can see his finger. Okay, let's take it. One, two, three. Three. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Jin Wai. Uh, thank you, Jin Wai. I think we can uh, have the, yeah. Okay, so firstly, I would uh, like to extend the warm greetings to all the participants from Minba in Beijing. Uh, today, I'd like to thank Avid and Christopher for their excellent moderation. Today is the conclusion of uh, the long uh, eight seminars, which we had as a part of 2.0.2 International Conference, the Bamboo a Sustainable Construction Material. And it is also the third world symposium on the sustainable biocomposite material and structure. This series of the seminar and webinar happened during the past two months in November and December. This includes the technical session as part of the Bamboo Rattan Congress, which we recently had, uh, and also in bar UN of Triple C COP27 side event at the Egypt. Uh, in bar would like to thank the 37 organization who partnered with us as the co-organizers and the supporting organization. Due to the limitation of time, I would not be able to mention all the aims, but I want to assure you that INBAR recognizes and greatly appreciates the support like received from all the co-organizers and the supporting organization. Uh, thanks to all the speakers and moderators, we had approximately 90 to 100 speakers from eight sessions. The webinar had the registration of like some 1,500 people from more than 70 countries. And the webinars and the seminars had uh, like some participation of online and physical, like some more than like 1,000 participations. And then the recorded video, like some published, had the views more than like 4,000 uh, times. The news of the conference was like reported in 13 like the media outlets, the print medias, institutions and blogs. And uh, it was like read more than 
20,000 uh, times or like some people. Importantly, INBAR, UNFCC, Innovation Hub, organize a side event at COP27 at Egypt, which attracted more than 2,500 post session views, which is almost 10 times as in most of other COP27 side events. So it shows that uh, the construction seminar, the construction, the bamboo as a construction material is like widely accepted and it is an upcoming material and it has a very green future. In closing, I would like to thank Leo Kuwai, who is our coordinator of the Global Bamboo Construction Program for her efforts in successfully organizing this eighth session. And also to my colleague, Jin Wai and Yu Chen, uh, who provided the coordination and technical support. In closing, I wish all the participants, all the speakers, yeah, yeah, many thanks and great success on all the future endeavors they do. Uh, I formally close this webinar uh, session. Many thanks indeed. Have a good night and good afternoon. Thank you. Buenas tardes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Macho. Okay. Thomas. <laughs> See you next year, Chiwei.